Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. How is everybody doing? I hope everybody is having a fantastic day or night or evening or something else, whatever you are having, wherever in the world you are. Today, I want to welcome you to the greatest show on earth. And uh, yes, David, what's up? Yo, hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, it's weird. What? Done like a million things this past week, and we were just live, like what last Sunday? Yes, I've done so many things this past week. It feels like two months ago. Yeah, that's how it, it always like, feels it to me. Feels like two months ago that we were live. To me, whenever uh, it's evening from the morning, it feels like it was two months ago. That's how it works for me personally that's how messed up my perception of time is that's yeah. what crack that's what crack does to people yeah 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 it, it does it does i mean i just <laughs> anyway uh what's up everybody hello and welcome 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 today we are going to have a fantastic show david did you watch the whole debate uh, by, uh, by Mohammed hijab and rabbi shmuley on pierce morgan i didn't watch it but i listened to it i listened to the whole thing you didn't watch it shame on you listening to it so Shame I missed all, the, I missed all the cool facial expressions and stuff. <laughs> oh, you will have lots of fun. Speaking of facial expressions, here we have this guy here with his facial expressions. That That's the face of a man who got his way, which is hijab's main goal. I mean, apart from attention. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that was a... Uh, that was <laughs> that's his reaction to Pierce originally said controversial uh hey, what do you call it controversial? Why don't you say I'm Oxford? Why don't you say I'm Oxford? And then he <laughs> Pierce does it for the next show and hit job. That's the face of a man is getting his way. What did you think of the debate? Um, I had only so up until uh just today when I listened to the entire thing, uh b based on the Twitter reactions, I assume that uh, Hijab manhandled him. And then when I actually listened to it, it, it didn't seem that. I mean, it was kind of a disaster in terms of uh, uh, not making a lot of progress, just, uh, you know, insults flying back and forth and shouting over each other and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I'd say Rabbi Shmule was, was uh, holding his own against Hijab as far as the antics and so on. Yeah, um, it was a lot of it was just shouting, um, but it got really bizarre. <laughs> it got really, really yeah, it weird. got creepy in, in a way that only I mean, I can't think of another person besides Muhammad Hijab, besides some random pervert you might find on the street, um, <laughs> would would go in some of the directions that Hijab went. Yeah, and it's 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 funny because uh, you and I both have a history with Muhammad Hijab, right? And we we, we both experienced the. Um, the kind of things that he says, the stuff that comes to that guy's mind. I mean, I made a huge video compiling all kinds of weird things he said, but I was, but even I was surprised at some of the stuff that he said when I listened to the debate. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm I'm surprised that there are still people who don't know how to counteract that, right? Because he started he started doing you know he started pulling those stunts with us, and uh, we uh, yeah we know how to respond, and, and he stopped that stuff with us. Yeah, but then he goes on to other people. Now, now, what, what's going to happen long term is he's just going to keep doing this, running around until everyone knows how to react, and then uh, <laughs> that's not going to work anymore. What's funny is um, during the whole show, it was like um, he was acting in such a weird, in such a childish way, and the rabbi was basically like responding to him in that way as well. Where Pierce, in the end, just looked like like the reasonable guy, like a teacher who is, you know, representing these two little kids who just can't behave. It's like, guys, please, please calm down. Stop it. Stop it already. <laughs> I don't know. It was so funny. Do you want to start? Yeah. Hmm? Do you want to yeah. start? Yeah, yeah, let's go. You do? Let's, let's okay. do some improvisational comedy now. The, the comedy will do itself. Okay. Israel at war, the uncensored debate. Mohammed Hijab is a Muslim philosopher, scholar, and YouTuber. Philosopher, scholar. <laughs> eight million people. He's a philosopher, king, and the future caliph. <laughs> He's been called the most famous rabbi in America. He's the international best-selling author of Kosher Hate and the Israel Warrior. Both men are passionate. Both men are influential. And they both have vehemently... Why did you call me passionate? Why did you, why did you, call, me passionate? Passionate? Why did you call me genius? Yeah, why didn't he mention uh, his other book, which is Kosher Six? Yes. 
Tonight, they go uncensored and head to head. I'm bringing together two very opinionated, passionate, influential people, very opposing views, and we're going to have a proper debate. What do you call this opposing? <laughs> proper, proper debate. <laughs> proper debate. This is the furthest thing from a proper debate in history. What's... I mean, I mean, apart from these guys just like shooting each other or something like that, you couldn't be yeah. far away from a proper debate here. What's funny is uh, Piers Morgan. He's like, uh, on one hand, it seems like he was really, uh, he 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 was really enjoying the, the you know, what was happening and how much uh, activity it brings. But on the other hand, he was genuinely disappointed that they didn't even have a proper debate. That that they never actually debated the topic. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think anyone's walking away from this more enlightened. In fact, and and Pierce eventually gets to this as far as like the takeaway is like, I mean, is there even a, is there even hope for the future when you can't even have a discussion with you know? Yeah, I think one of his final words was, uh, "You let yourselves down" or something like that. Uh, How dare you! <laughs> no, you're just a little Somewhere. weakling. And, and I think I think at the end when he says something like that, his job goes, "Who cares?" Or he says something like that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Why are you stuttering? And then, and then and then Piers Morgan finally says, "I don't care about your sex lives." And then it ends. So <laughs> why are you why stuttering? Yeah. More that we can That's agree on than we first imagined. So thank you for joining me, gentlemen. We tossed a coin before we came on air tonight, and uh, actually, you won the. the the toss, um, and you said you want to go second. I defer so, to my my brother. And the way this will work, uh, Muhammad, we have Allah four... has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> you see, <laughs> look at look how he sits there. <laughs> like no compliment, ta taking no compliments. Just well, I mean, it's just funny though. He lost the coin toss, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's over. It's humiliation. Of this Allah has spoken. And at the start of each one, you'll both get one minute uninterrupted to say what you want to say about each of the themed. Uh, titles of each block. So you go first, and at the end of your minute, you'll hear a sound, and when you hear that, uh, you end, and then a <laughs> rabbi Shmuley gets his chance to speak. So the first theme is... I, did, I, I wonder if he trained that, like if he always like always be like this. Mm -hmm. like, what, what, are you, probably, what are you trying to impress, man? He probably sat in front of a mirror planning that one. This is how I look. <laughs> this, will be, this will be most intimidating. <laughs> it's a simple one. Are Hamas to blame? You have a minute, Mohammed, from now. From one perspective, Hamas started the battle because uh, obviously from October 7th, even they themselves titled it to find Al-Aqsa or the flooding of Al-Aqsa. But from another perspective, if you really look at it from an international law perspective, we're talking about 1967, we're talking about Resolution Syria, Resolution 242, in which it is actually stated that um, Israel is in a belligerent state because they're occupying the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza. And they have been, so therefore the war has been continual for a very long time, according to international law. But let's remove Hamas from the situation altogether. Remove! Let him speak the way, Mark. It's very impressive to my followers when I say, remove! It's like, the truth! <laughs> you see? Do you have, you have the West Bank? And what do you have in the West Bank? You have 187 children who have been put in prisons. They have been put in prisons, according to Beth Salem, without charge. You have 44 children before October the 7th that have been killed before October the 7th, it's in just 2023 alone. So if you remove Hamas from the equation, what well, you have... What he actually means by that, by the way, is anybody under the age of 18. So, um, and it also happens that it also so happens that half the population is, I think, under the age of 18. Um, did I get that right? Something, something along those lines. And uh, many of many of whom are actually uh, arrested in the middle of acts of violence. And yeah, I, I would say, I mean, of course, there is there is something to criticize about that. But does it really take away from the actual question here? Hamas is Hamas to blame. Have you have the West Bank? You, you remove dominance from the equation. You have the West Bank, and what do you have? You have occupation. You have settlement, which you condemned rightfully so. You condemn that on your show. The settlement's there. Okay, Rabbi Shmuley, one minute to respond. Resolution two. Why is he so like he he started yelling immediately? It's so funny. Four two in the UN doesn't mention a single thing about aggr aggression or aggressor. That is a total fabrication, and it speaks about disputed territories. But let's be clear. The occupier of really, that's funny. Gaza is Hamas.
They won an election in 2006, had a civil war with Mahmoud Abbas, took the Palestinian Authority officials, threw them... Hold on, hold on. This is actually uh, important. Um, The question by Pierce Morgan was about Hamas. Is Hamas uh, to blame? And Mohammed Hijab vastly talked about the West Bank uh, and about the occupation and the settlers and this and that. He never even addressed the situation in, in Gaza, which is that... You know, there is no occupation in Gaza. There is Hamas is in charge. Hamas is in control of Gaza, aside from the blockades, which are in place because Hamas uh, refuses to make peace. So, interesting approach. Off buildings, killed Muslims, killed Arabs. Mahmoud Abbas is afraid to go to Gaza. He's terrified of Hamas. He hasn't been there since 2007. And let's be clear, Hamas is an abomination to Islam. Sultan Salah al-Adin, the greatest Muslim conqueror of all time, after whom the main artery in, in Gaza is named, he said that you have to allow all prisoners to be redeemed. He would never hold hostages. This is, and remember, the Islam is about fair treatment of prisoners of war. Hamas beheaded Thai non-Jewish workers. You asked me the last appearance here for real uh, first-hand sources. I'm the first-hand source. I saw it in Kibbutz Alumim. They raped women. They had sex with dead women's okay. bodies. They are okay. evil and I'm do up, the okay. right thing. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is really weird, and this happens throughout the entire exchange. I, it looks like Re- uh, Rabbi Shmule is only familiar with uh, Dawa guys from 20 years ago and not the, uh, the recent batch, and doesn't seem to be familiar at all with mm-hmm what the Muslim sources say or what Islam actually teaches. In fact, later he I, he sounds confused when he thinks that the uh, Hadith and the Hamas charter is actually a Hadith from Muhammad and not and not just something that Hamas made up. Um, but even here, even here, uh, Islam is all about fair treatment of captives and these guys are raping them. Like what, what, wait, what? <laughs> you don't think, you don't, he doesn't know that's part of Islam. That's directly from the Quran. That's directly from the Hadith. Yeah. So. Um, it, it, it is indeed part of Islam to, uh, to, to do that, to take captives and to also uh, have sex with them non-consensually. Um, if you are in charge of those captives, that is established that it is something that Muhammad did, according to the hadiths. It is something that Islamic uh, history is full of, that the Islamic conquerors, uh, the caliphates allowed, the soldiers did throughout history over and over again. Um, and it is something that Muslim apologists in our time, I, I don't know if Muhammad Hijab personally ever addressed this topic, but for example, Daniel Kikichu is one of those, uh, among others, who have said that there is nothing wrong with it and it is completely permissible. In fact, Daniel Nakikachu said that you could even take a seven-year-old or so, or a child of any age as a sex slave in battle. I'm not kidding. For those who have missed it, for those who don't know what we're talking about, for those who are not familiar with these Muslim apologists, these Dawah guys, and with uh, Daniel Nakikachu, let me play this here for, uh, uh, for a second here. Classic. What about, because you've tried to justify uh, sexual slavery after a war, so what if a man finds a, a seven-year-old, let's say, start her period, could he take her back as a sex slave? So that's a whole different debate on um, slavery and concubinage. I'm just talking about the minor aspect. Would that be fine? Yeah, so the, if a girl is uh, any age, she can be taken as a sex a slave, slave, right? <laughs> yeah, as opposed to being left to die after war. So women can't take care of themselves. They don't need to be taken by the men because they're too capable of caring for themselves. Only for about... 10 seconds left. Yeah, a four year old, a seven year old, an eight year old. Not talking about the women and the children. Yeah, so he says any age, any age, as soon as they show, show signs, you can take them as sex slaves. So uh, IP here asked about the age of seven, and he says any age, mm-hmm. any age, pay attention, any age. Yeah, and uh, and 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 people aren't aren't supposed to be worried about guys like this taking over. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, the point is, Rabbi Shmuley, throughout the discussion, seems to think that Islam is a lot better than what its uh, representatives like Hijab are proclaiming and doesn't seem to realize that it's, it's, it's not, that these guys are much closer to what Islam actually teaches uh, than, than uh, whoever he's been interacting with for the past few decades.
Yeah, and you can also find this directly in the Islamic sources here. Uh, for example, here in Sahih Muslim, it already says uh, at the header in Sahih Muslim, it is permissible to have intercourse with a female captive after it is established that she's not pregnant. And if she has a husband, then her marriage is annulled when she is captured. And the hadith then describes how they were hesitating to have sex with the captives, but they asked Muhammad and he then allowed it. So this is traditional Islam. Traditional Islam. Mm -hmm. Straight out the straight out the Quran and the Hadith. Straight out of Hadith, yeah. And then call them evil. All right, we've had a minute each. Okay, we've got a, a passionate start. Mohammed, let me ask you about Hamas. I want to first, before you do that, I want to commend you, Pierce, mm -hmm. honestly, because bringing me on for the second time. <laughs> <after> <laughs> Look at that. We've we've discussed this a million times. When I mean, it's they've got two. They've got two tactics. They've got two of the traditional five uh, tactics for manipulating people. It's uh, you just shower people with praise when they do what you want, and you heap abuse on them when they don't, and you uh, you you rapidly condition them into behaving as you want. Which is why it's exactly why Muhammad Hijab was smiling at the beginning in the last discussion. What? Why, why did? Why? Why you call me controversial? Why you call me controversial? How dare you? How dare you do that? And complain like a big baby. And then for this one, Pierce introduces him exactly as he wants, and then he sits back. See, and then and no, notice here he's praising him. He's praising him for uh, for helping him here. So awesome. Yeah, yeah. No one. Walter said that intro sound keeps being brilliant. I know it is brilliant. It's fantastic. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to commend you. And the fact that you actually condemned the settlements is very good. But people want to know: Do you think the IDF are a terrorist organization? Uh, no. You don't think they're a terrorist organization? Okay. Well, if you look at the UN definition of terrorist organization, why is he taking control of the of the yeah, panel? Yeah, that's the, the other thing. That's the other thing he does. He thinks he's in charge here. He's not in charge. This is a, a program where Pierce Morgan is moderating the room and Mohammed Hijab suddenly thinks he's in charge and tries to take over. And, and I mean, seriously, Pierce saw that last time, so he should have taken some precautions and the precautions should have been either beforehand or at the beginning of the show or when Hijab started right here, hey, uh, stop it now or I will cut your mic. I'll cut your mic and you can leave. Uh, yeah, if, so, if I was sitting there, I would, uh, you know, cut in and say, hold on, what's what's happening here? You know, what is happening? <laughs> this guy yeah. is not in charge. Yeah, or, yeah. Maybe yeah, Rabesh Modi should be more familiar with these people. And then, yeah. Yeah, I would I would uh, escalate if I were Pierce. I would say, uh, hey, uh, anytime, you know, you guys cross certain lines, I'm uh, I'm cutting your mic and I'm letting the other person uh, talk uninterrupted for, uh, for, for two minutes or so or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They say killing civilians for political no, you're reasons. You're asking Why my opinion. Not? No, but if, I, I if the UN definition, the, according to the UN definition, is killing civilians for political objectives. Mm -hmm. Why are they not terrorist organizations? Well, it's, it, well, you've asked me a straight question. I don't yes. think they are terrorists. So when you see babies like this, the ones it's who. I'm not entirely sure that that is accurate, by the no, way. No, 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 it's not. I mean, following his definition, every war has been the, <laughs> an act of terror because yeah. all, all wars involve uh, killing civilians. And he just he just called his he just called his his prophet a terrorist because Muhammad killed civilians over and over and over again. Uh, people like Ali Dawa, his partner in crime, advocate killing people like you, even though you're a civilian, you're not part of a military marching. He advocates killing you. So Ali Dawa is a is is promoting terrorism and so on. He's just it, no, this is this is not anyone's definition. Um, yeah. Or, or he doesn't understand the entire point of uh, of defining terrorism. So terrorism would be uh, when you use unlawfully, un when, when you unlawfully use violence against the civilian population in order to uh, achieve some uh, achieve certain goals. And um, th I mean, there there are even even um, s certain nonviolent acts against the civilization that are uh, against the civil population that are considered. Uh, terrorism if you uh if you do something if you cause explosions or i don't know mass manipulations killings for the sole reason to spread fear or draw attention in order to further a political goal that is uh what terrorism is an army declaring war and then firing and causing uh collateral killings would not be terrorism in any sense it doesn't fit the definition at all so this is complete nonsense yeah and i'm pretty sure hijab knows that yep i am too now he's holding up a photo of a dead child to uh win over the people and he's basically using the hamas tactics here 
which are uh, don't let anyone evacuate, attack, let Israel come, let Israel uh, kill civilians and then cry to the world and say, how dare you world, look at what they're doing. This is basically what Mohammed Jarab is doing here as well. Unfortunately for him, the Pierce Morgan show censored the photo, so it doesn't really work here. So well, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, it would have been that would have been a that would have been age restricted if they left that up. Yeah, why would he even do, uh, try to show this? It's, it's just stupid. Yeah, I, I mean, well, he he knows it's either they they're going to have to blur it because it would be age restricted if they don't. Yeah, yeah. Who kill babies like this are not terrorists. It's horrific. So the people can who I, kill babies like this are not terrorists. Well, let me let me respond. <laughs> yes. Let me respond. We'll, yeah. we'll both, it's not your turn. You can both get into this. Here's my response to that. And I thought carefully about this. I'll be very honest about my own feelings. I, I have a real moral quandary about this because as a father, I, I hate these scenes of kids being killed in Gaza. It's horrific, right? We all know it's horrific. Well, are they a terrorist organization, well, though? I'm, I'm about to explain to you what I think my position is. My position is after what happened on October the 7th, it was so barbaric, so disgusting. So you can kill children? Well, no, what you can do... That's exactly what terrorists say. Why isn't he letting him speak? <laughs> let me ask yeah. you... And it's just, I mean, you wish someone in this discussion was familiar with the Muslim sources. Because uh, according to your according to your prophet, Muhammad Ajab, the what you're not supposed to do is target women and children. You are completely 100% allowed to kill women and children when you're you're that's not your goal it's just it's just collateral damage you are totally allowed to do that according to muhammad himself and so the question is is the idf deliberately targeting children or are the children collateral damage and in, in that and that they're targeting someone else yeah, it says here in Sahih Muslim, and this is very important, of course, because Mohammed Hijab is primarily a Muslim apologist uh, and preacher. And it says, it is reported on the authority of uh, so-and-so that the Prophet of Allah said, when asked about the women and children of the polytheists being killed during the night raid, they are from them. So <laughs> this is Muhammad's response. When they raid and they kill women and children during the raids against the polytheists, they ask Muhammad about it. Muhammad said, I don't care. They are from them. So this is what the prophet says. This is what the holy, holy prophet says. So why would you then call IDF terrorists? Yeah, and and just I mean, just imagine if Pierce or Rabbi Shmule just bring that up. Wait a minute, you're saying you're saying killing civilians, even if you're not targeting them, you're targeting someone else, but you accidentally kill women and children. You're you're saying that's uh that's terrorism, that's war crimes. Uh, how do you explain this? Alhamdulillah. And it's just notice you're just we're just we're just giving the example because of the women and the children. If you're talking about uh, killing non-combatants and civilians, and so that's all over the place, especially with the Jews and the Muslim sources. Yep, yep. This is not a exactly hey, this is right right someone right. else becoming the host you of can, a show you can put it down. and now interviewing you. I, I you're have your Finally, he's actually speaking about it. I do not believe so. They kill civilians for political reasons. You have to let me answer. Go ahead. Okay. Watch. He won't let him. When Why is Pierce even engaging in this? This yeah. is ridiculous. And it's just ridiculous because he, he won't let Pierce say like three words without interrupting yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. When Hamas did what they did. Two things. One, Hamas knew exactly what Israel's response would be. They knew they would come incredibly hard back. I don't absolve them. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not absolving anybody. I'm, I'm, not, just... absol I'm not absolving them. Okay. okay. I'm saying the West Bank is West I know, Hamas. I know. West Hamas. Let me, you have to let me answer. You've you got 44 children killed like this in the West me, Bank. This is, this, is, this, is, on, this is ridiculous. Wait a minute, Rubbish. Let me just ask you quickly. Go ahead. I believe Israel has a right to defend itself from after that terrorist. I'm serious. If Rabbi Shmuley at this point walked out and said, okay, I'm, guys, I'm done with this. I'm, I didn't come here for this. It would be completely understandable. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I mean, Pierce Morgan is very experienced, right? And uh, and he did this for, for decades, forever. It's it's very strange that he would here let the guest take over the conversation and actually engage with it. Yeah, it's weird. I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think he's used to it. Like, and, and with Muhammad Hijab, it's something that would be planned, right? Like I can go in there and throw, throw this whole thing off. And uh, that's part of, Hijab always does that. He always does something to to kind of throw the other person off. He he's 
we've said a million times before, he has no interest in engaging someone just, hey, back and forth, uh, even field and so on. It's uh, There's always some goal to throw the other person off. And and by the way, right now what he's doing, it's nothing compared to what he's, uh, he's about to do. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. can they kill children? Wait a minute. Can they? Wait a minute. Particularly after the Hamas spokesman only last week said that they want to do this again and again and again. That's an existential threat to Israel. Why don't they fight them man defended. to man? Man Muhammad. to man. Fight them so, man so to man. Why do you have to kill children? Wait a minute. Let me Why answer you. Have to children? Let me kill answer children? you, Muhammad. Why? Let me answer of you. Of a ratio of 100 to 1, by Let the way. Let me answer you. 100 to 1 ratio. Let me answer you. Go ahead. Otherwise, it's pointless. Go ahead. So, I agree that Israel must defend itself. I agree they have to get rid of Hamas because Hamas is wedded to an ideology of existentially removing Israel. Is this Israel. acceptable? Wait a minute. I'm coming to your answer. Is this answer. acceptable? I'm coming to your answer. This is not, this is not. This is, no, this, no. This, wait, this is not even, this wait is a not even a conversation. Wait a I'm minute. Sorry. Listen, me, I came all the way from the United States for this debate. Let me finish. And he will not let anyone let me, else speak. Let and if that's finish. how these Slow, shows sorry, work, guys, no, no, no. Guys, you are rude, guys, you are a bully, you just are trying to interrupt people. I didn't have a chance to speak, or there's no point in doing this show. He did this last time and you allowed him to, but I won't allow him to, because I will never be bullied by a bully. At the moment. Let me, let me. Finally. Don't stop, please. Please, take over, man. No one, wait a minute. No one's allowing me to answer your question. Go ahead, sir. And it's this. I believe Israel has a right to defend itself. Okay. I agree that they need to get rid of Hamas. But in this way? Who are terror groups. In this way. Well, Here's Morgan lost control of the room. Very quickly. It's only five minutes and he already lost control of the room. This is very, very bad. Oh, well, here's the quandary for me morally, right? Why here's is that a quandary, though? I'll tell you why. With Hamas, it's not a quandary. I'll tell you why. Because in war, in war, when you declare war, as Britain did with the Nazis... 100 to 1 ratio. No, no. 100 to 1. There are, combatant a, to non -combatant there are ratio. a far higher number of children in Gaza, proportionate to population, than almost anywhere in the P world. Piers, so when P they Piers, go after give Hamas... Me give me a chance. Very no, sadly... Mohammed, let me finish. No, no, no. Very sadly... You are the one who insisted... Time. I never did. Rabbi but you will never respect the I will come time. to you He's literally in 30 you seconds. He's going to ask you a question. In 30 questions. seconds, I'll come to He's you. Come. God, this is ridiculous. Pierce Morgan doesn't get the point of the rabbi saying, hey, this is not part of this conversation. What is happening? This should not be happening. And Pierce is like, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. I'll get to you. I'll get to you. He really lost control of the room. This is ridiculous, man. You Let me finish, please. I am Calm in charge down. here, Mohammed. So, my final point on this is unfortunately, in war, civilians 100 get to killed. 100 to 1 ratio. 100 to yes. 1 ratio. Yes. 100 get, to 1 ratio. Yes, they get killed. No, no, not 100 to 1 ratio. It's an civilians unacceptable ratio. Civilians get killed. Uh, uh, Pierce, listen. Much really, in you come. You know, you know, Pierce, can I say respectfully, and I mean this as no insult, I'm amazed that you're intimidated by this man. I feel, <laughs> not, I feel well, with all due respect. I'm not if, I, if, if I can speak, he, I can, he brought me in if the second time. Speak, if I can he speak, if I can speak. I wouldn't bring him back if I can speak. If I can speak, if I can speak. And he raises a very valid question, by No, he does not, because I have, I have, before he did this debate, he went on X on Twitter and said, I'm only doing it if there's equal time. And then he is violating that. I never asked for equal time. I just want to be heard. But he won't even let me be heard. Let me explain something to you. You said in a, in a video the other day, and you can look me in the eye, you said that Jews are now trembling. I Muhammad, I, I am not. No, 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 don't interrupt me. I, I, I am not I trembling. It's all, on my, it's all on my Instagram page. Now, you see this yarmulke? It means that I represent something. I'm an ambassador. You're, You're an ambassador You're of Islam. Lying. You are talking about a religion that started the world's first universities, educated women. <laughs> Fatima started the first first university. Can you, can you tell he's, can you tell the sort of Muslims he's been interacting with? He's been interacting yeah. with like the Dawah guys from 20 years ago. And, uh, doesn't seem to be aware <laughs> that he's been uh, not interacting with the most reliable folks. Yeah, he's also. Um, I think he was impacted also by the by this whole uh, recent. Um, you know, the, the people who are in charge of uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, political figures, political people. Um, he also mentions it later on. By the way, he visited the United Arab Emirates. He visited Dubai, and he was quite impressed, and and all and all kinds of stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe he is also just trying to appeal to some good part of Islam and trying not to make this a um, you know a hostile a a fight a war between religions. You know, maybe that's the point. Maybe that's part of the point. I would understand that entirely. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> the things he says here. Islam educated women, uh, you know, started universities, this and that. Yeah, no, no, no. Islam doesn't do that. Islam certainly didn't educate women.
country in Fez, Morocco. Irrelevant. Now we have a man who says that he's a representative of Islam. He's meant to be speaking he goes, to you, right? He speaking goes to, to Speaker's Corner. He speaks about whether five-year-old girls are old enough for sex. He says that gay men ha- are dying of what's AIDS what's as, a, as a punishment from God. No, and I'm sorry I've I've to say this that. to the, to the listeners, that. That. that blood is gushing from their backsides. The They're script? better off. The, you know what Where's, it is? Because that. you never are desecrating a great religion. Now, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why it appeals. Why it's here. Because he will bring defend it back to the Ham- debate. I will. I yeah, will. Bring it back to the topic. He will defend Hamas's away. butchery, You're running away, savagery. You're running away. He doesn't care that Hamas away. is it, is an abomination to Islam. Because this is such an annoying trait. I mean, this whole yeah. uh, repeating repeating something over and over and over again to interrupt your opponent. That is that is. And I mean, uh, by the way, I mean, think about think about the level of narcissism here with Muhammad Hijab. Rabbi Shmule is actually promoting Islam as this great world religion and this great source of all sorts of wonderful things and pointing. And he's, he's claiming that Muhammad Hijab is actually out of whack here and Hijab can't stand it. Right. Hijab <laughs> he, this guy's actually doing dawah for him and Hijab can't stand it because because. Uh, uh, he's criticizing hijab in the process. Yeah, as soon as he mentioned, as soon as the rabbi mentioned, uh, uh, you know, some some good things about Islam, Muhammad hijab said irrelevant, 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 nothing to do. Like, <laughs> Shut up about Islam. We don't care. We only care about me. <laughs> he brings up random things, and then when the rabbi actually uh, issues some praise, he's like, irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. That this is, by the way, what he's referring If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Chapter 65, verse 4. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, Wallahi lam yahidn. Wallahi lam yahidn. And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? Yeah, so this is the, the talk about uh, having sex with five year olds that the rabbi just referenced. Cause, yeah, and, away. And he, cause uh, so- yeah, we should address that real quick because that's going to keep coming up. Um, and Hijab keeps denying it. And. In defense of Muhammad Hijab, yes, in that, in that, in the, in the full video, he's not saying that it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old. He's saying that if you just go with the Quran, you'd have to say it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old because the Quran, the only, the, the, the rule that the Quran lays down is just, it just talks about have, having sex with prepubescent girls. Hijab's uh, position is that, yes, it's halal according to the Quran, but because of Muhammad's example of waiting a little bit longer, therefore you should go with that and consider it haram to have sex with a five-year-old, which is, we've talked about this before, why this is interesting, because Muhammad himself said that if you go with a man and let a man define a human being uh, trump what Allah has declared halal or haram, you are worshiping that man. And so right here you have yet again Muhammad Hijab. According to his own prophet, he is worshiping his prophet and the, the later uh, people involved in the hadith and so on, uh, allowing that to trump uh, his God. Uh, but notice, even though it's e- even though uh, even though it's not correct to say that Muhammad Hijab approves of sex with a five-year-old, his buddy Daniel Hakikachu absolutely does. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And we have just seen it. But he hasn't done- Even with an 11 year old, by the way, if the parents allow it. And the children in Gaza are dying because Hamas uses them. Sorry, at- I mean, I mean, 11 month old. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Even years. 11- that's that's like a great grandma for one of these yeah, guys. Yeah. I mean, 11 years the- old. An 11 year old has a has a nine year old <laughs> daughter. And then the nine year old has a seven year old daughter. Yeah, and the yeah. seven year old. Yeah. Yeah, like even Russian, 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 Russian nesting old. doll situation. Eleven months old, according to him, if the parents allow it, with an eleven month old. As bulletproof vest. Okay. The United States and France okay. and England said yesterday that the Al Shifa hospital is a military base. Okay. It has a tiny veneer. Let him have his minute. And that's a tiny veneer of, emer- of emergency rooms. Okay. Oh, a minute. But the underneath all of it is a military base. You have a minute. And let me tell speak. you something. If it's true 
that any of these countries care about the Muslims in Gaza because they believe what he's saying that Israel's killing them. This is a map of all the countries that took place last week in, in Riyadh to save the Palestinians of Gaza from Israel. Do you know how many, that's Israel, a tiny thing. You know how many of them took in even one Palestinian from Gaza? Zero, nothing. All right. Look at that let map. Me, let me, because they so want to, the Arabs want to see, no, I'm pointing. Pointing. the I'm Arabs want to see Hamas. Don't intimidate me. Don't bully me. Thank you. Let me ask you. Don't intimidate me. I'm not afraid I've got a better ask question. Let me, let me ask you one specific question. It's, it's funny because uh, at, at this point they're just yelling at each other, but later they will just they will start laughing and uh, uh, st they will speak more and more about sex or sexual stuff. Yeah, it gets and, real. It gets real graphic. You might want to hide your kids uh, yeah. for what's coming up here in a little hide bit. Your you don't kids. Want to hide your kids. Hide your wife because uh, the job <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is wild stuff. I like how they both bring visual aids. Yeah, yeah, yeah question which you raised, which I don't think actually is your belief. I don't think you have defended what Hamas did on October the 7th. Yeah, I haven't. I think you share our Are they evil? Unless I'm wrong. Are they evil? Are they, are they evil? 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 Rabbi Shmuley, it's Hamas. You're now doing what you accused him of doing. So let me ask you, what is your view of Hamas post-October 7th? I think that they, just like anybody else, have to be examined, have to have, have to look at all the... What's your opinion about them? Yeah, I think that... If Look, here's my opinion. Let me be straightforward about this, right? Anybody who kills civilians, anybody, whether it's the IDF, I'm consistent in this manner. If, if, if it's proven with un, beyond reasonable doubt that these people have killed civilians in both of our faith traditions, in Islam and Judaism, in the Quran is mentioned, in the Prophet, he said it himself, you cannot kill a woman, you cannot kill a child. I condemn them. Wrong. I condemn them. Wrong. So, liar. Point, liar, 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 liar. He did not say you can't kill a woman or a child he specifically said you can you can't you they, they they're not supposed to be the targets why they're your property why are you killing your why are you killing your slave girls and and your future slaves yeah yeah, yeah. and to be fair hamas directly targeted women and children and uh what's interesting is at this point muhammad hijab has still not condemned what hamas did because he only said here that it is, if it is proven beyond reasonable doubt, he keeps it hypothetical. Yeah, he keeps it hypothetical. He has still, if not you were to Hamas. show, yeah, and you know what, he's doing that deliberately. He makes it sound like he's condemning them to all the people who are watching, but he leaves the door open for Daniel Hikikachu to say, Oh, so I don't condemn Muhammad Hijab because he didn't say that Hamas actually did it. He simply said, Yeah, if someone does it, then, then he would condemn them. Yeah, any, anyone who has actually analyzed the evidence knows for a fact that beyond reasonable doubt, Hamas did target and kill women and children as well. Deliberately targeted, looking a woman in the face and killing her. So, but no, he just keeps it open. That's why I do. Straight away, whether he's Muslim, whether he's non-Muslim, whether he's Christian or anybody else. I've already said that. So I'm not being inconsistent here. My question is, if that is exactly the barometer that we're using, if that's the moral reasoning that we're using, then we have to say, look, if you have a 100 to 1 ratio, and that's what it is, a 100 okay. to 1 ratio. And you know how I got this figure? I got this figure from the IDF themselves. At this point, nobody actually noticed that he played a trick here. And nobody said, so do you condemn Hamas then? Yeah. Because they have reported okay, to them. Let me ask you this. Let me ask and, you this. And it, it comes up over and over again. And he 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 keeps going back to the hypothetical. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, if someone does, if someone does that, and l later it becomes if you were to condemn the IDF and call them a terrorist, then we can say, then you can say that uh, that Hamas are terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. Hamas deserve to stay in power after what they did. I don't think we should have Hamas in power. What well, I think we should. Okay. No, let me so, tell you. So, so how do we, do, how we should have? How do you get rid of them? We should have a Palestinian authority. With oh, he just wants to lead the conversation. Why don't you answer the question? Pierce Morgan is asking you: Should they be in power? If not, how do we get rid of them? But no, he wants to take over. He wants to preach. Bigger armies okay. and airports okay. with proper tanks and with uh, 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 airplanes like every country in you the world. You know what? You might be right. But Absolutely. Here's the point. They how, won't allow it. How do you get, rid of, won't allow how that. Do you get rid of Hamas? Of do course you, they don't allow it. Yeah. Do you hear how insane this is? They're saying, hey, how do you get rid of Hamas? He's saying, give us a big giant military. Give the Palestinians, <laughs> give the Gazans and the West Bank a big massive giant military. That'll solve the problem. Are you insane? You know what will happen? 
in, in an ideal in in his ideal world, if his ideal uh, you know situation arises, if his demands were met, and uh, people actually were stupid enough and came together and said, okay, you know, you know what, let's try this. Let us uh, create this uh, big free Palestine. Let us uh, give them military power. Let's have them. Let's have, let's let them have tanks and uh, an airport and you know bombers and whatever it is. They would then cause a war and try to take over Israel. And if they succeeded, Muhammad Hijab would then say, well, well you had it coming. Sorry. Yeah. They had their reason. You know, they were right to do this. They were right to do this. Let's look at what Israel did in the past. Of course they are going to do this. So to him, it is just about empowering the Palestinian side in order to then make them superior and get rid of Israel in the end. That, that's what this is all about. That's yeah, what and, and, and just imagine that if you were in any other kind of war and said, hey, what are we going to do here? Oh, well, these guys who want to brutally annihilate the other side, you just have to keep giving them more and more weapons. Yeah, yeah. D D D Israel deliberately does not want any solution in which uh, the Palestinians actually have a country where they have uh, a strong military. Like you can go back to many of the speeches, many of the, the the demands issued. You can go back to Netanyahu when he uh, explicitly advocated for a two-state solution. What he said and what many others have echoed uh, for a long time is we want to have uh, a neighbor that we want to have peace with, but under no circumstances can that neighbor have an army. It must be demilitarized because we cannot... We cannot live under these circumstances. We cannot have a militarized Palestinian state as a neighbor and then uh, constantly be afraid of being wiped out. It's simply not possible. It doesn't work this way. It will not work that way. It has to be demilitarized. What you don't do, I can tell you for a fact, is try and kill 30,000 of them with a 100 to 1 ratio. Because if you do that, then you're committing genocide because you'd have to kill 3 million Palestinians. Rabbi Shmueli, do you know, even, do you even know the definition of genocide? What I haven't definition? said genocide. What's it? You just said it. You no, said it. He just said it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Rabbi Shmueli, do you know even... I can tell you for a fact, is try and kill 30,000 of them with a 100 to 1 ratio. Because if you do that, then you're committing genocide because you'd have to kill 3 million Palestinians. Rabbi Shmueli. He just said genocide. Do you know even do you even know the definition of genocide? What's I haven't said genocide. What's it? You just <laughs> what? <laughs> so if you do that, then that is genocide. Do you even know the definition of genocide? I didn't say genocide. I never said genocide, liar. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> hey, hey. The next question. The next question should have been: Do you know the definition of gaslighting? <laughs> <laughs> he just said genocide. No, I didn't. No, I, no, I didn't. I said it. Did no, I... <laughs> Rabbi Shmueli, do you know even do you even know the definition of genocide? What's I haven't said genocide. genocide. What's it? You just said it. No, I said, no, I said if you. What is the definition of genocide? What's said the said definition? What is what? it? No, I said if you. What does it matter? You just said it. I so. didn't say yeah, genocide. You did say you did say it. If you, you always claim to be an academic. You're always doubting your Oxford credentials. What is the definition? All right. Condition. You said condition. Genocide. Genocide. Genocide, said genocide, said genocide, said genocide is where. You'll be genocide. Genocide is where. I didn't, I didn't you, target I didn't an, you target an ethnicity for extinction. Geno, ethnicity, side, murder. Yes, if you do it. Yeah, if you kill three million Palestinians, are you genocide? There are one. If you kill three million Palestinians, are genocide? There are one. Okay, so one thing to establish here is. Where they are at right now, according to Mohammed Ejab's logic, Israel has not committed a genocide. And Mohammed, that Mohammed Hijab declares Israel has not committed genocide. Yes, you can take this out here right now. You can take the, according to what according to the logic here, according to what he just said, Israel has so far not committed a genocide. So when when people uh, propagate this idiotic idea that Israel has been committing genocide, then you could bring this up and say that this guy who went to Pierce Morgan and so, you know, he, he was so proud about how he presented himself. He was so proud about how he will make the case. This guy says that such a thing did not happen. Israel did not commit genocide because it would only be genocide in a hypothetical future if they killed 3 million people, for example. There you have it. All those who say Israel has been committing genocide, you're losers. 
Don't point, speak over each there other. There are 1.8 million was the Holocaust genocide? Muslim was the Holocaust Arabs genocide? who live in total peace in Israel as equal citizens. In fact, Israel practiced reverse discrimination against the Jews because the Jews are conscripted to, to fight question. Hamas. So... If you, Israel, you, excuse okay. me, no, you will not interrupt me. Stop, if Israel, it, you will not it, interrupt me. You will yourself. not interrupt yourself. me. You will not. You are embarrassed. He's, uh, he's telling the rabbi that he's embarrassing himself. Who is so far embarrassing himself? <laughs> not interrupt. You will not bully me. You will not interrupt yeah, me. I am not afraid of you. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. Now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Why are you stuttering? Why are you shaking? Why are you stuttering? He already started with that. Stop shaking. Why are you stuttering? then you need to control your guests with yeah. all due respect, Literally okay? He said, both, he, control both he, he said equal time and there's no equal time. Now, there's no equal time if Israel respect, was interested right? in a genocide of the Palestinians, why do they have 1.8 million equal Arab Muslim citizens who are in the Israeli Supreme Court, who are one third of the medical profession? Do you, know that, do, you know, that, do you know that an Arab, pre, an Arab judge put the president of Israel in jail for accusing? That's true. That's true rape that was Moshe Katsav. That's how little Israel is an apartheid state, genocidal state. This man sitting next Sorry, to Sorry, I interrupted it too early. Here, let's have him have him have it, have it again. That is true. That was rude. An Arab judge put the president of Israel in jail for accused rape. That was Moshe Katsav. That's how little Israel is an apartheid state, genocidal state. This man sitting next to me, Mohammed Hijab, will not distinguish between self-defense when Hamas comes to brutalize okay. and murder your people versus when an army okay. like wait, Britain, wait, wait, wait. like France, Stops oh, retaliates to the, simply let, protect the Rabbi Shuri. Shuri. I have You to say, don't believe the Jews should have a right to defend Rabbi themselves. Say, say it outright then, then say it. The, the Jews, Jews have, have a right, right to defend themselves. They do. It. Yes, they do. So of that's why we have right. to go Everybody has a right to defend so that's themselves. Why we have right to go. See, Muhammad Hijab declares Israel has a right to defend itself by destroying Hamas. <laughs> and by the way, here's the data. Um, Israel's population 21% is Arab. 21% is uh, Arab, 17% uh, are uh, Arab citizens of Israel. So I that doesn't really look at genocide, does it? <laughs> that doesn't really look like it at all. Gaza, okay, stop wait. Hamas, yes, they can wait. go into Gaza Rabbi and stop Hamas. But, no, they Rabbi can't Shuri, go in, but, but don't, no, hey, hold on. But, Let me tell you my position. Let me tell you my so position. So they can go in, take uh, ask me a question, can I ask, yes. answer it? Yes, they can go into even fight, even Abu Ubaidah, the, the general of Hamas, he said, Nahnu fin in Arabic. We are waiting for you. Mm. That's why he's okay. being said. Hold on. You've asked me a question. Go ahead. They do have a right. What, my what I've been advocating all along is face-to-face -face confrontation. That's what they're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what they're doing right now. And, and Hamas is failing. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there are like a million problems with this. So on the one hand, I mean, again, check out, check out the history of war. You generally bomb before you uh, send in your troops and so yeah. on. Um, but my goodness, yeah. What and, and notice, notice right there. Hey, you asked me a question, you can't interrupt. You asked me a question, like ever, he would ask Pierce or Rabbi Shmuley a question, then instantly start interrupting them. It's uh, yeah, imagine how ridiculous this is. This is like you're playing a game, like it's like you're playing in a uh, you know, a, a video game with somebody, and uh, and that somebody uh, takes over and, and and defeats you heavily, and you're like, no, that's unfair, that's unfair. Like, Mohammed Tijab is acting like that he's playing a video game with somebody. Th this and is notice not, it's this the is same not reality, it's yeah, not it's, reality, it's the same thing as like it, it, Islam as a whole. It's ah, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you. Oh, you're responding, oh, we're victims, we're victims, we're victims, yeah. In reality, if it is an existential threat, you have Israel there. Israel is attacked over and over again. Most, most uh, infamously now, Israel is attacked on one day by thousands of people who infiltrate the country and indiscriminately kill uh, men, women, children, elderly, anybody. Anybody, they kill civilians. One thousand four, I think it was reduced to 1,200 people, mostly civilians. They kill them. Israel then declares war and responds to this. And you think now, oh, okay, okay, well, if it's war, then, okay, uh, they should not, uh, you know, be too powerful. They should, uh, you know, come, come as equals. They should only come face to face. They should not fire rockets. They should not drop bombs. <laughs> what do you think this is, man? This is reality. This is reality. It's an existential threat. And Israel responds to it severely. They don't care about what you think is fair or not. They don't care about your expectations of coming face to face, putting all of the, you know, the the the, the extreme weapons down, uh, you know, putting putting their guns down and, and doing a fist fight. Nobody cares about this. Yeah, and it's, it will be it's, powerful, and you will lose. 
it's just really, really weird because, um, again, in the Muslim sources, Muhammad simply having some sort of dream saying, oh, I, I think they're going to kill me. I, I think I'm getting a revelation that they're going to kill me. That's enough. That's enough to 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 declare war. Someone pulling a prank on another person is enough for war. Uh, these are all these are all justifications for war. And there's no there's no concept of, oh, it was uh, it was three guys who did such and such. Therefore, we're going to keep that equal. It was OK. Your entire your entire tribe is is gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Mohammed did in Medina uh, with with the with the tribes, the Jewish tribes. He got rid of them uh, for something that one person did or for something the collective is supposed to have done. He went and eradicated the entire tribe or fought and expelled the entire tribe. Collective punishment. That's what he, he did. So uh, Mohammed Hijab's own hero here did worse things than what he expects Israel to do. Very, very funny. What I'm against, hold on, excuse me. What I'm against is a hundred to one ratio because if you have right. hundred, we're going to come to Mr. Brown. No, me... right. Okay, fine. Hamas is fine. hiding under hospitals. Okay. What face-to-face -face confrontation? Rabbi, Hamas is Rabbi shooting Rabbi children face -face. who are going to face -face. I'm okay with face-to-face -face confrontation. Two is I like it. Block two is it's exact. The, it's the honourable way. Block two is no, exactly stupid. this question. Go ahead, let's go. My... No. In in war, honor doesn't matter, Muhammad Hijab. You might be you might love these <laughs> these heroic, dramatic depictions of things, but in war, nobody really cares about bravery. Nobody really cares about honor. People care about achieving the goal, and you can continue crying about it, but that's just how it goes. Any observation? He hasn't had about you so far. You're being more personal and ad hominem than he is. With all right. due respect, I think that's extremely right. unfair. Because well, you are. every oh, time ridiculous. I say anything, no, listen. And he's, blame, he's blaming what? Rabbi Shmuley. Like, what? He also, Pierce also, um, when Rabbi Shmuley speaks, Pierce quickly interferes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do the very same thing with Mohammed Hijab as much. Yeah, and it, looks like, it looks like he is doing something very typical here, which is uh, he sees Rabbi Shmuley as the easier target here, you know, and uh, he finds it easier to, to interfere with him so he quickly does it. He finds it easier to blame him, so he does it. But yeah, he, it's, it's, like he's, it's like he's trying to it's like he's trying to appease the Muslim crowd a little bit by saying, see, I'm, 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 I'm so balanced that I'm on your side. Yeah, I mean, who here thinks that so far Rabbi Shmuley was more, uh, you know, got more personal than Muhammad Hijab? Yeah, I, that's ridiculous. And and for real, I mean, Hijab's about to get more personal than yes. anyone in the history of debate. Yes, yes, yes. And let's see that. Muhammad, you keep answering if, for him, but in fact, if Muhammad, when you actually ask him questions, because he gives you straight answer. answers. If Muhammad, well, if Muhammad answers. Hijab wants to be a representative and ambassador of Islam, then he has to take responsibility for his position. I don't want to be any of that. He actually said that Islam are <laughs> police and death. We, we are, you're okay. not going to beat us because we want to die. We're right. prepared to lose thousands Rabbi, of people. Really, we're taking Is a break. Islam really religion of death? We're you taking a, a poor break. ambassador Martin, of faith. Martin, hey, hey, hey. I believe in martyrs. Look, Muhammad Hijab interrupts as soon as he speaks, and then and then they are still acting like it's the rabbi. This is really weird. Of course. Right. Do you want to be a martyr? Yeah, absolutely. You want to die Martin, fighting you know, the Jews? I didn't say Jews. Who said Jews? Okay. Martin, do you, know you want Martin to be a martyr? Where? What, what does it what what say? Yes. The martyr means someone the dies for Muhammad faith. told us, "Man qutila duna malihi fahuwa shahid." Whoever dies defending themselves, defending their wealth, is, that is, what you a, want? is a martyr. No. Are you? Do you want to excuse die me, excuse me. defending excuse Islam? Me. Or do you want this, Islam to be a religion child, of peace? This child. Excuse me. Hold on. Look at this. Look at this. I mean. Rabbi Shmuel, again, he seems to have been interacting with, uh, with, uh, I mean, similar people to what we've interacted with, but like 10 or 15 years ago, and everyone is still saying Islam's a religion of peace and tolerance. And no, there's no penalty for uh, killing, apo I mean, for apostasy or anything else. There's nothing like that in Islam. Islam doesn't teach you any of that. Islam's a religion of peace. And he, he's, he's, he thinks that's what Muhammad Hijab wants. And he, and Muhammad Hijab says he seeks martyrdom. What? You want martyrdom? My goodness. I mean, that, that's kind of that's kind of basic Islam with Muhammad saying that that was his like greatest desire. Uh, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and then come back to life and then get martyred again and then come back to life again and then get martyred and then come back to life. I mean, he was the, the early Muslim community was obsessed with it. That's Sahih al-Bukhari. And then Rabbi Shmuel is acting like this is some weird idea that Muhammad Hijab has. We need to really, we should have a conversation with Rabbi Shmuley. We should sit down and, uh, and and talk to him about what Islam is and what it actually teaches and how he didn't get it right so far. That would be interesting. Yeah. 
very, very interesting. Do you agree or not? Because agree or not? Hamas is using him as a human is, shield. Really? He is, a, yes, Just Hamas like is you, okay, hiding okay. behind him. Let's Correct. go to the next section. Condemn right. Hamas. Let's go. All right. Let's time. This is so ridiculous. Like, uh, you attack your opponent, then you keep your, your children in the war zone, the opponent shoots back, your child dies, and you're like, you go, look what happened. Look at this dead child. Look, at, this is what you're for. This is what you are for. This is what you are. Do you want to kill, kill children? And people uh, on the day it happened, people were pointing out that was going to happen, right? Yeah. On the yeah. on the day on on the October, right after the October seventh attacks, everyone is pointing out now Israel's going to retaliate, and then Hamas is going to run over. We're victims. Look, they're targeting children. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Precisely. No. Really, come on, man. Let's so try, try and talk over each other because the viewers can't hear it, okay. right? Let's go I don't this. mind the passion. Sure. I don't mind the debate. I don't mind the fire. I yeah. do mind if we can't hear what you're saying. It's pointless. Yeah, let's do the minute. Let's thing. go to the second, the second topic, right? This time, Has he had his minute, by Rabbi way? Shmuley, you will go first with a minute to say what you want to say, and then Muhammad, no, uh, the you'll question, get yours. Please? So the theme is this, and the question is this for Block Two: Has Israel gone too far mm -hmm. in its response to the October the seventh terror attacks? Okay, Rabbi Shmuley, you have a minute starting now. I just came here by taxi and passed the statue of Winston Churchill. That's in the lifetime of our parents, okay? He is the greatest British statesman of the 20th century. You know what he did when he had a genocidal threat, knowing that Hitler wanted to eviscerate, annihilate Britain? He carpet bombed all of Germany, Dresden, Essen, um, uh, Hamburg. Look at a job looking at his it's watch. Look, 40, 42 seconds. 42 it's not seconds. Air Force to carpet bomb said. He said, send in its military. I have a friend who died, six, six children, 39, because he was personally trying to stop a Hamas terror tunnel. Israel is surgical. Israel is only going after the fighters. Israel has opened humanitarian corridors for the, for the Palestinians to go south. Hamas shoots them and makes sure they don't go. Hamas builds its military structures. Right, Shifa Hospital is this much hospital and it's this much military. They love using Palestinians and that's why they've stolen their money. They got, they got about $16 billion from the international community. There isn't one bomb shelter in, in Gaza. They don't care about the, the okay. civilians at okay. all. Israel's doing the right thing. Mohammed, Hamas. You have he is referencing something that uh, recently came up, by the way, and that Hamas themselves admitted as well. Hamas uh, leaders were asked about why they don't have bomb shelters and why they don't, uh, you know, protect the population. And uh, the Hamas speaker said that they are not in uh, th th that that their job foremost is to build their their tunnels and wage warfare against uh, Israel, and that it is not their responsibility to defend the civilian population, that it is the responsibility of the United Nations and of Israel to de to defend the Palestinian. <laughs> civilian population. This is what the Hamas leader said. Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, Israel pulls out, they have elections, they elect Hamas, and then Hamas says, oh, we, we don't have to do anything here. Yeah. We, yeah, ju yeah. We, ju we just have to keep, uh, we just, we dig tunnels, we launch missiles. That's what we do. We dig tunnels, we launch missiles, we hide, we don't let anyone uh, out of the area because we want human shields. And uh, that's what, that's what you elected us to do. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what we do. We just fight here. <laughs> Uh, in fact, let's let's play this here. وهذا سؤال رائج وشائع يعني من قام بتشييد 500 كيلومتر من الأنفاق لماذا لم يشيد مأوي؟ So you have built 500 kilometers of uh, tunnels. Why haven't you built uh, shelters where civilians can hide during bombardments? يلجأ إلى المدنيون خلال القصف. نحن شيدنا الأنفاق لأنه لا نملك. This is Hamas political bureau representative. He says we have built the tunnels because we have no other way. ما ندفع به عن أنفسنا من. Protecting ourselves from being targeted and killed. القتل والاستهداف هذه الأنفاق من أجل أن نحمي أنفسنا من الطائرات. نحمي مقاتلين من الأنف من الأنفاق. أما ال أما القطاع غزة فأنت تعلم والجميع يعلم. So. They want to protect themselves when they are in the tunnels and when they fight Israel. It is not their job, basically, to uh, do anything else outside of that. Everybody knows that 75% of people in Gaza Strip are refugees, which, by the way, is a very vaguely applied uh, term. They live there. They have been living there forever. They were born there and grew up there. But they just call them refugees because they expect to one day go back to Israel and take over. <laughs> Listen what he said here. It is the, the responsibility of the United Nations to protect them. 
So this guy says, when asked, why don't you build bomb shelters for the civilian population in Gaza when you are spending, uh, you know, so much, uh, so many resources to build, uh, you know, underground tunnels, he says, it's not our responsibility to do that. It's the United Nations responsibility. We don't care. We just care about fighting. <laughs> في أن يقدم كل تبعا لاتفاقية جنيف الدولية أن يقدم لهم كل and the occupation by which he refers to uh, to Israel خدمات وهم تحت الاحتلال so Hamas speaker admits that they don't build any shelters for safety for the civilian population they don't care because it's not their job although they are the elected government have a minute Oh, hang on, hang on. L little side, little side note. Everyone, go. Uh, everyone who's got a Twitter account or whatever, uh, or uh, just want to share it on YouTube, but share the link to this. We're at almost twenty nine hundred. Let's see if we can break three thousand. That would be. Oh yeah, cool. we we are almost at three. Yeah, you're at almost viewers. three thousand, man. Almost three thousand viewers. Share this. Share this with your grand grandparents and grandchildren, and uh, relatives and but everyone. Not, but not your kids, because it's about to get gross up in here. Yes. Do yes. not send this to your kids if they're kids. Absolutely, but almost 3,000 viewers, so we, we go on. 100 to 1 ratio comes from the following figures. We know that 10,000 civilians have died. Of them, uh, according to the IDF, as reported by The Guardian, 60, dozens, they say, about 60. Uh, liar, 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 liar. That's what I was just looking up. If you saw me over here, I was reading. I was like, that sounds that sounds wrong, that you've only killed 60, uh, 60 Hamas. I looked it up. That's what I was over here reading. I was searching for it um, and, and what the IDF reported. It's 60 commanders, 60 Hamas commanders is what the IDF reported. So look at what look at what hijab is doing. He's saying they say 60 commanders. He says we're going to be generous. We'll round that to 100 and then 10,000 people have been killed. So it's a 100 to 1 ratio. It's a it's a 100 to 1 ratio for every Hamas fighter you're killing. Uh, no, not what it said. It said Hamas commanders. So, and I'm saying that I'm pointing this out because this is like 50% of his argument for the entire rest of the uh, rest of the debate is this hundred to one ratio. What you can't accept is a hundred to one ratio. You can't have a hundred to one ratio. 60 Whoa. commanders, not 60 commanders, not 60 fighters. Wow. See? Israel comes out slain 60 odd senior and mid-level Hamas leaders now hunting for combat and commanders. Wow. This is one of the main arguments that Mohammed Hijab uh, uses. That's his main here. argument. That's his main argument. They killed only sixty uh, Hamas, you know, terrorists or whatever it is. The report is not that they are that they killed sixty Hamas members. It is that they killed sixty something senior or mid level Hamas yes, leaders. Um, among among the many Hamas fighters that they killed, they killed sixty commanders. Wow, this is. <laughs> And 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 this is what he's citing as well because yeah. he's he's citing the IDF, but the IDF did not say we killed sixty uh, Hamas members. They said we killed sixty Hamas leaders. Mm -hmm. So his entire argument here collapses. This is what he builds his entire idea on it's the entire case, whole debate, and he didn't even get it right. Nope. He probably pre prepared with this argument. Yeah. And he didn't even get it right. Yeah, and he uh, and the, so the question is, does he know he's being deceptive here? Wow. Uh, that's a question. I'm like 50-50 on whether he knows it because he is sloppy with sources. Uh, but this is a this is a sort of stunt he might pull. So I can't really tell. This is truly ridiculous. Well, I, I know that he, um, you know, when, when, I, when he had a discussion with me, he cited several things that were completely wrong. And I only found some of them out uh, later when I looked into it. And he also found out that he was wrong, but he never corrected himself. So I'm not entirely sure. I'm also conflicted. He's not very honest, but he's also very sloppy. Mm -hmm. And but I mean, I mean, think about this. Like, this is his main argument, and he's basing it off of a off of an article. And then I mean, he didn't even read the headline. He didn't read the headline. <laughs> the headline <laughs> the headline corrects his entire case. Yeah. I mean, that's funny because that's what that's what got pointed out uh, by inspiring philosophy with Hakikachu. Hakikachu. Like he'll he'll cite all these studies and then actually reading them completely contradicts what he's saying. He's apparently just like looking at a title and not understanding the actual contents. And then hijab is a very simple hijab doesn't even understand the titles. So at the hundred to one ratio, this is the foundation of Muhammad Hijab's entire point during this debate. 
is false. It's it has been co- it has collapsed. It is completely meaningless, completely wrong. What do we do with this information? <laughs> well, let's see how far he gets with that being his uh, sole case. Now that we know, because Pierce doesn't. Uh, now that we know, it's totally bogus. Wow. Everyone, Hamas, you have to kill 100 civilians. That's effectively what we're saying. If the trajectory continues as it is, if the trajectory continues as it is, then you (laughs) have to to kill 3 million Palestinian civilians in order to kill 30,000 Hamas fighters. If you want to extinguish them, eviscerate them, annihilate them, destroy them, you have to do that. Now, you have Herzog, who is the president that you, uh, you interviewed, saying that all Palestinians... They are responsible. This man is being. Look at no. He notice he specifically said Hamas fighters. You have to kill if you're keeping a hundred to one ratio. Then to kill this many, you have to kill this many, and it's it's all bogus. It's all bogus. Yeah, yeah. We're not. We're not. No one's talking. He's talking about killing to kill thirty thousand Hamas fighters. So I guess that's an estimate of how many Hamas fighters there are. Uh, then he, and he keeps this hundred to one ratio, and therefore he'd have to kill a hundred times as many Palestinians. But this isn't again. This isn't talking about how many Hamas fighters have been killed. This is the the, the entire. His yeah. He, he can't read a title. He can't read an actual title of an article and get it right. Yeah. Um... What what the president of Israel said, by the way, is it is an uh, an entire nation out there that that is responsible, and we are at war, so we are fighting, uh, which is not a very unusual thing to say if you are fighting, if you are if you are officially at war with a different nation. I mean, it, it's maybe you should even respect that they recognize Gaza here uh, as a separate nation, and um, then saying that the that the nation is responsible. And can you blame him? I personally can't because we just had um, we had a poll as if we didn't have enough polls already on this matter. We just have a poll here according to which, um, let's see what this says. How much do you support the military operation carried out by the Palestinian resistance led by Hamas on October 7th? And you see here in the results... This one is uh, West Bank, and this one is the Gaza Strip. In the West Bank, 68% extremely supported, 14% somewhat supported, 8.4% neither support nor oppose. In the Gaza Strip, 46% extremely supported, 17%. But look, look, look at the look at the because uh, then you have some uh, undecided. I'm talking about the West Bank, but notice. 3.3% somewhat do not support just massacring, just crossing the border and massacring Jews. Uh, 3.3% somewhat do not support it. And 3.6% are extremely against for a total of about 7% who are really against it. Yeah, so what, what was what was said is not that every single Palestinian is at fault. What was said is that the nation is responsible. And when you look at this, you see that the majority, the vast majority of people uh, are, okay, the majority of people are in support of what Hamas did that day. And only uh, a minority opposes it, and some are undecided. Who can you blame for saying this? But yeah being more slippery. He's being more slippery than the lubricants that he sells in his daughter's sex shop. And that's the reality of the situation. <laughs> did you really just say that? <laughs> he did. He did. I saw it. He did say that. <laughs> I, I love the rabbi's reaction to this. Here's stuff. where it's about. Things about to get wild here. Descending with... Oh, God. I just, Mr. Go, Mr. Golden Showers bringing up the, bringing up the lube for... <laughs> wait, where were we? I just accidentally went. Just, back. We'll just play it and see where we are. I think we're a little farther than that. He hasn't had a much so far. You're being more personal. And I- okay. Oh, yeah. We're way past that. Be a murder? Yeah, absolutely. You just can't hear it, okay. right? Let's go. He is the greatest British statesman of the 20th century. You know what he did? With- All right. Almost there. From the international community. There isn't one bomb shelter in, in Gaza. They don't care about the. the okay. Case of- Oh, someone's a Which we're being liberal by saying okay. situation. <laughs> okay, Palestinians, yeah. they are responsible. This man is being more slippery. He's being more slippery than the lubricants that he sells in his daughter's sex shop. And that's the reality <laughs> of the situation. 
Did you really just say that? You know, you seem obsessed with Jewish sex. It's bizarre. Yesterday, you actually spoke about Ben Shapiro. Who actually says this during a debate? This is... Yeah, I mean, and these guys don't know. These guys don't know how to deal. He, he should have instantly dialed it up and gone after Muhammad, but he doesn't want to because he, uh, he 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 seems to like uh, seems to like he seems to think that Islam is nice and wonderful and doesn't know this stuff about Muhammad. <laughs> Piro's wife. Yes, you I actually you, you said yes, to Ben Shapiro, yes, your did. wife's a coward. Well, you were more of a man. Is that what you're trying to yes, say? All right. Then you said that Jews have BDSM. We, you're speaking about no, sexual about lubricants while people are dying. You know, Muhammad, get your head out of the Jewish bedroom. It's really bizarre. Can we get it? Can we get it? Let me be clear. No, no. Sexual lubricants? How embarrassing. Can we get it back? 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 Can we speak about five-year-old girls being ready for sex? Come on. Wait, wait. He... He said, "You speak about five year old." Five year old, yeah. He's talking. He's talking about the clip that we shared. Yeah, yeah. And he says, "No, I don't. No, I don't. You're a liar." That's what he just said in response to that. He did speak about it. Yeah, he did. He did yeah, he did. Yeah, he did talk about it. If you're saying he approves of it, not quite. He says that the Quran says it's halal, but it's kind of uh, you, you have to take Muhammad's uh, teachings into into account. And maybe yeah. wait, maybe wait till she's, uh, you know, eight or nine or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, but again, uh, Hakikachu, total thumbs up uh, as far as he's concerned. He would say, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? Of course. Not? What's wrong with that? Of course. With us, yeah. She's five. Five years old, 11 months old, two days Doesn't old. Matter. As, long as, you get, as long as you get parental consent, that's it. Yeah. Um, and and what, what's what's amazing here is he starts he keeps coming back to this. He keeps blasting him because of he has a sex shop. Meanwhile, Ali Dawa is selling his uh orgasm intensifiers in his videos. No. Like, yo, yo, we, we do you want to have the sexual strength of 30 men just like Prophet Muhammad? Well, then you need Ali Dawa's magic penis pills, chunk <laughs> full, chunk full of camel urine and everything you need to be with as many child brides as you want. Do you mean this here? Ali Dawa on his video advertises uh from Amazon female Xiagra uh and male Xiagra. And also the website, it's like a like a knockoff natural Viagra kind of thing, which he yeah, advertises. So yeah, he's he's got the he's got the he's got the full ad. He's got the full ad in there with a uh, hot hot babes all over and. Yeah. <laughs> man, 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 man! This is this is interesting. So is, why are we is, talking is, about is the rabbi? Is your five year old child bride? got too much energy for you especially with all your other child brides then you need ali dawa's magic penis pills <laughs> wrong with the inner jobs bless. like no, no, no. Oh. Uh, rabbi shwilla should have talked to us first beforehand and he could have he could have just fired right back yeah 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 this is this is messed up. So the thing here is the interesting, um, funny aspect is that is that Rabbi Shmuley, he wrote a book which is called uh, Kosher Sex, and he had this he has these teachings about you know bringing back um, you know uh, love and uh, you know sensual marriages and all of that back to Judaism and introducing that back to the you know to, to the average Jewish public. And he actually established teachings on that along with all of the other religious or political stuff that he uh, talks and uh, writes about and his daughter apparently um opened a um a shop that is called kosher sex where they are selling uh online uh where they are selling all kinds of different things that that married people married couples can use and that issue of course as soon as muhammad hijab was informed about it of course it couldn't escape. He mm -hmm. had to. He had to grasp it because sex is something Muhammad Hijab loves to talk about. Sex mm -hmm. is something that Muhammad Hijab Golden loves showers. to in, in 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 harassment and uh, you know mockery. He has to use it, so he, he took advantage of that immediately. Hey, you you remember him? Uh, you remember him? Uh, he asked his fellow Muslim, "Can I suck on your wife's tit?" Oh yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yep. Uh, absolutely. So yeah, he he loves to use this kind of language. And why? It goes. I mean, it goes back to Muhammad and his companions. Remember, Muhammad said, uh, "Someone brags, hey, we crossed three thousand. Um, oh, hey, what's up? Three thousand. Woohoo! Uh, he says. Uh, he says. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, Muhammad. Yeah, he says uh, if if someone someone boasts about his lineage, tell tell him to go go uh, bite his father's penis. Abu Bakr famously said to one of the polytheists. 
um, go suck a lot's clitoris. So you believed in a goddess named a lot said, go suck a lot's clitoris. And so it's built in there. And then Muhammad hijab just uh, rolls with it. There you have on the side there. Can I suck your wife's tit to make her mahram? Uh, can I suck your wife's tit? <laughs> <laughs> this is and and notice. I mean, I mean, think about this. You know, you're having a debate. It's going to be about an hour How about long. I suck it's your a, wife's tit. It's about an hour long. And what do you do? Oh, hey, your wife's sex shop. What about the lube? And he's about to go on. Oh, dildos, dildos, vibrators. Ha ha. This is this is like. This is like the premier dai of our time. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. Powerful stuff. Powerful. Uh, and of course, we also have this one here. Uh, golden where showers. It says golden showers. I have a. I think I have a better, better screenshot. Get on your knees for DW. Get on your knees for David Wood or Daily Wire, whatever you want to. This guy is awesome. As much as we complain, yeah. we love this guy. <laughs> or here, here, here we have a better, better view of there. This. There are there are two billion, there are almost two billion Muslims in the world. If I could pick someone to destroy Islam from within, this the guy. Uh Daniel Hakikachu is number two. Uh, Ali Da was number three. It's just amazing that the guys that that we would pick to destroy Islam from within are exactly the guys who are in control of the Dawah right now. Yeah. So this is the guy. He loves to talk about this stuff. He, uh, for those who are not aware, most people, I guess, know by now. But for those who are not aware, uh, this is Mohammed Hijab uh, visiting our live stream, which was meant to be about Muhammad, not this Muhammad, about uh, Prophet Muhammad. He visited our live stream, appeared in the live chat and started talking about uh, sexual things like, you two can play with each other. Get on your knees for David Wood. Gimp, David Wood can give you a golden shower. Go ahead and give David Wood what he wants. Let David Wood give you a golden shower. Gimp, get on your knees for your master. Boy, you can suck that golden shower from your master. I know you need a slave master. Golden shower, Gimp, get on your knees and so on let him slap your face you fiend so this is my yeah, you can tell what he's into <laughs> can you imagine being married to this lunatic my <laughs> goodness <laughs> it would have been nice if he had gone like all out like this on the pierce morgan debate <laughs> yeah and it would have been it would have been cool if uh pierce or rabbi shmule had, had been there and wait a minute i mean your prophet is a guy who ran around bragging about having the sexual strength of 30 men i mean it's his followers who are bragging but keep in mind how do they know how do they know anything about him he had to be running his mouth to his followers for them to talk for them to be talking about him banging nine wives in in one night and stuff this is the same guy you know gets gets caught in his wife hops's bed with a with a slave girl and so on and powerful wow. powerful stuff by the way yes we have uh this is the first time i think that i uh that we have more than three thousand viewers yep. live that's a record on, on this channel so this is a record uh let's get it to five and we're proud of that yeah we are very absolutely. proud we're very proud of that. <laughs> let's, go back. let's go back to the issue. Let me ask you a question. Let's go back to the issue. Let me ask you a question. Why are you, you shaking? I've got Muhammad, vibrators in your pocket. Come on, this, it's a serious debate. I think that? his daughter's vibrating. Come spot. on, leave him, please. You are Let, just... <laughs> but guys, for all you who are watching, when that happens, you are supposed to have a Quran with you. You're supposed to have a Quran. That's when you're supposed to tear a page out, pop it in your mouth, chew it up, and spit it out, and say, uh, "Say one word about my uh, my daughter again." That's what you're supposed to do. That's the rule. Who says this? Who's and, and bringing in his daughter? He's like, uh, I think he's got one of his daughter's vibrators in his pocket. Like, yeah. Like totally sick yeah. stuff. And we, we talked about this at the beginning. That's a job's goal. Say a bunch of stuff to get different, you know, to to really mess you up and get you whoa. Get you get you, get you uh, confuse your thinking and so on. Distract. It, it's just a it's just a strategy with him. There can't there can't be any actual calm rational discussion with him. And this was this was watched live by thousands of people. I mean, did those people? Did the, does this guy think those people were sitting at home watching it and were thinking like, whoa, amazing Islam seems really 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 mind blowing. Uh, I want to convert to Islam as a result of this. I always had my doubts and my prejudices, but after seeing this gentleman talk about uh, his opponent's daughter's vibrators in his pockets, I feel like Islam is a religion for me. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. I mean, 
Yeah, he he appeals to his crowd. Everyone else is going, "What is this mess right here?" Yeah. Come on, this it's a serious. Debate. I think he's got one of his daughters to vibrate. Uh, come on, leave him, please. You are that's just humiliating yourself. We're going to cut, cut all this stuff. Back to the issue. We'll cut yeah. all this stuff yeah. out. So there's no point. Why? Why you, leave it? People should see uncensored. what he represents. There's no it point uncensored. abusing each other personally. Oh, no, okay, Pierce, 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 I want to stick to the debate. Let's get to the debate. You don't want to do it. We'll end the debate. Let's get to the debate. Let me let me ask Mohammed a question. About, I about vibrators. About I'm vibrators. <laughs> he won't stop, by the way. For those who are wondering, he won't stop. He will continue. He will get back. He will make references again, uh, and we will analyze them. To me, yes, obviously yes. Uh, a, a fact that many, many more Palestinian civilians, innocent people, are getting killed as retribution by the Israelis for what happened on October the 7th. That's indisputable, right? Their argument is that they're going after a terror organization, Hamas, and unfortunately, in war, as Rabbi Shmuley correctly said about what Churchill did in World War II. Churchill was wrong. Churchill was wrong. Okay. Okay. Yes, he was. Yes, right. he was. Churchill was a war Yes, he was. Well, Churchill was a war criminal. Let me do this. Churchill, Churchill was a war criminal. Let me do this. And George VI. Was George VI yeah, a war criminal? All of them were criminals. Uh, really? Like, like war like war all criminal. criminal. Yes, of course. So anyone so that, his hang on, hang on. Rabbi Shmuley. War criminal. They were all war criminals. Churchill was a war criminal. Roosevelt was a war criminal. Everyone was war criminals. So what do we do with this information, David? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, one second. Um, Cameron from Capturing Christianity just posted in the chat, Shmule is coming on Capturing Christianity for a debate review. AP, want to join? Yes. Yes, he does. Yes, yes, definitely. Most definitely. You heard it here, folks. Most Rabbi Shmule on Capturing Christianity. Inshallah. Yes, with AP, we shall do that. I will. I will educate the rabbi. I will humiliate him. Will humiliate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! Hey, you are going to be able to share a lot of interesting stuff <laughs> about <laughs> Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> oh man! But hey, that's 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 great. Yes, later, let's do that. Let's do that. Let me ask. So let me get Absolutely. this right. You think the collective Win punishment? You think Winston Churchill was a war criminal in, yes. in standing up to the Nazis by killing the, uh, the who babies. killed twelve million people? I believe he was a war criminal. By doing what he did was a war yes. criminal. By killing in Dresden and Hamburg, is, by, by, by uh, the indiscriminate killing, collective punishment. My morality says that's impossible. Okay. That yeah. Okay. Well, Muhammad was also a war criminal. Prophet Muhammad was a war criminal. Indisputable. Yeah. Indisputable. Indisputable. You, you, you guys, you could put this together with a couple of passages from the Muslim sources and say Muhammad Hijab declares Muhammad was a war criminal. Yes, Muhammad was a war criminal. Alhamdulillah, my morality. Muhammad was a war criminal. Look at this. You see it right here. It is reported that they said. We asked about the women and children of the polytheists being killed during the night raid. Muhammad said they are from them. So Muhammad was a war criminal. War Prophet criminal. Prophet Muhammad was a war criminal. There you have it. That means the British people who that's supported impossible. him Can't and voted him in. They were also, says that's just a second. Just a second. That's why I believe. But the British people. Yeah. You believe he was a war criminal. Yes. So, so therefore, you your belief is that no retaliatory action. No, by you any can retaliate to the man, not to the baby. I imagine we followed uh, this guy's logic. Imagine we followed the logic here. And um, so during the Second World War, a lot of uh, air raids, a lot of, um, you know, massive carpet bombing, fire bombing, which is, uh, you could argue, is incredibly cruel. But uh, it was done as a retaliation. It was done by the Germans. It was done by the Japanese. It was then done as response by the Americans and the British uh, on German cities and also on Japanese cities. And many of these contributed to the ending of the war, weakened the enemy significantly. It is argued, although it is disputed, it is still argued mostly that... Uh, the two nuclear bombs dropped on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, brought the end of the war by bringing uh, Japan down to its knees and surrendering. Without it, uh, the war could have continued and uh, many more people could have died. And that's that civilians. Was, that was the reasoning. They said the the Japanese sense of honor. They said we would have had to have gone house to house fighting people who were coming at us with swords because they would not they would not have uh, 
it was the idea was they would not surrender unless they were just completely overwhelmed and realized we cannot we just there's there's zero there's zero chance of us uh fighting these guys and so that was the goal now notice you can still you can still say it's still wrong you you you, you shouldn't have done it even then but hijab's position here that uh you just you can't drop bombs at all because you might hit you might hit civilians it's just dude it's not it's war sucks it, it, war war fun. sucks that's how yeah. that's how it is and the idea that you're going to notice the idea so you're talking about bombing a town you you have to invade the town you bomb it first to weaken it uh because that's you know you're not you're not going to have as many people killed going in there if you bomb it first um and yeah he's it, this he lives in a total fantasy land he's completely contradicting his own religion his own prophet he condemned his own prophet his own prophet is a war criminal 14 centuries of muslim uh, Muslim leaders are war criminals. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, these nations are war criminals, according to him, because they 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 bomb civilians in Yemen. So uh, everyone everyone's a war Everyone who's ever been in war is a war criminal, according to Mohammed Ajab. All war criminals. They're all war criminals. Everybody is a war criminal, always. So yeah, the, the war, the Second World War would have continued. Uh, the biggest atrocities were done to uh, different populations. We in the West often talk about the Holocaust and uh, the occupations and mass killings committed by the Nazis. Meanwhile, um, in the East, in East Asia, uh, the Japanese Empire did some really, really, really messed up things. Uh, one of those is known as the, the the rape of Nanking, which is where they um, invade. And the, the Japanese army is just free to run through the streets and kill, burn, torture, rape, whatever yep. they want without any restraint. You could say that in comparison to that, the Nazis didn't have such a policy where they let their, their soldiers run free and, and rape and torture whatever they want. The Japanese did that. Yep. And uh, to they stop a... them, bombings were, were applied. Stuff like that would have continued. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty sick too. They had they 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 constructed special chairs and strapped the Chinese ladies into these special chairs, which kept their legs spread out and kept them raised up, so that they could just be repeatedly raped by line lines mm -hmm. of soldiers and so on. They had beheading contests, like like the the leaders would say, "A hey, fastest, let's see who can be who can run around and behead." a uh, hundred people the fastest with samurai swords and stuff they're running around just beheading uh just beheading people in the streets and so on and uh, yeah the, the the concept of just war theory had not uh, had not reached them yeah people are also bringing up uh unit 731 uh, by the japanese which was a uh, a chemical um I don't exactly know the details of it, a chemical biological war warfare system, which the Japanese were developing as the Second World War was ongoing, by which they uh, they massacred thousands of people and they wanted to uh, advance it significantly to cause mass genocides, uh, to impose the, the power and the supremacy of the Japanese <laughs> empire upon the entire world. Uh, there was some real sickness going on. And... <laughs> These bombings were necessary to bring an end to it, but according to Mohammed Hijab, no, that was all all wrong. It's all wrong. Should have never been done, except of course when his own side does it. Please. Tell me a war in history, yes, where civilians haven't been killed. No, oh, I'm not saying civilians haven't been killed. It's Just about this ratio. It's about the ratio. It's no, about no, the ratio. What is the ratio? Hundred to one is acceptable. Actually, what morally, hundred to one. Here he comes back. He says, "No, notice, guys. It's oh, it's not about civilians being killed. It's about the ratio that I've explained. We've already. Been, we, if you tuned in late, his ratio is completely bogus. He couldn't even read the headline of the of the the source that he's citing." He get, yeah. he, I mean, all you have to do is literally read the headline and you see that he has no clue what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, Actually, morally, 100 100 to accept. Okay, well, one one is an is hang on, Rabbi Shmuley. So let me give you a ratio. Yeah. How many people did the Nazis kill? I don't know. You don't know. Million. We, know six, we, know, we know they killed 6 million They killed 12 million people. I don't know. So we don't know. Like 6 million Jews. Sure. Right? Sure. So 12 million, 12 million how, many died in, how many died in Dresden? How many civilians died in Germany? Do you know? I don't know exactly. Right. Around 25 to 25,000, I think. Between 20 and 30,000. Let me check if I'm correct. All right. <laughs> so, prove it. Um, that is, that is funny. So that prove wasn't, that, that was nothing by his standards then. This is a good question, actually. Uh, let's see. 
the easiest source is always Wikipedia. Uh, up to 25,000 people, yeah. 25,000 people. So you don't actually know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about because you I know in, in Dresden Churchill, and Hamburg... You said it's, it's about... Kid, you, there's some wrong. Yeah, go ahead. There's some wrong. Yeah, you ahead. said it's to do with the... Ratios. The ratios. Yes. You don't know the ratios. When no, you no, call, I know for a fact... You Dresden call and Winston Churchill... Well, what are the numbers? Dresden and Hamburg. What are the numbers? Dresden Dresden Wait a minute, Hamburg. Rabbi Shmuley. When Dresden. you call Winston Churchill a criminal yeah, for basing criminal. it on ratios, you don't even know what they are. No, I know for... No, we, uh, there's difference of opinion among the, uh, the scholars. No, there isn't. There is different there is. There is. Tell us the opinions. He's speaking like he's talking about Islam. There's different opinion among scholars. Ibn Kathir says... Yeah, here we have uh, Air Force historical source... What does it say? In 2008, an independent historical commission formed by the city of Dresden concluded that approximately 25,000 lost their lives in the attack. Uh, nothing in comparison to the killings committed by the Nazis. Um, what's also interesting here is, by the way, um, if you go into the history of, of the, the bombing of Dresden, uh, what the Nazis also did is they initially um, leaked misinformation and extremely inflated uh, numbers of victims <laughs> to the press, which they announced to the world. I think uh, what was going around initially was 200,000 to 300,000 people in Dresden died because uh, the British and the Americans with their cruelty came and bombed every, everything indiscriminately and they killed 200 to 300,000 people. This was a propaganda tactic uh, applied by, by Goebbels. And during the current Israel-Hamas war, Hamas did the very same thing. And here's Mohammed Hijab. No, Churchill was the evil one. <laughs> Man. Tell us what they are. Oh, hold on. There's a How many in Dresden? Oh, excuse me. Stop speaking for How me. many in Dresden? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you. How many in Dresden? Whatever the number. You don't if, know if it's all. indiscriminate, okay. I'm against it. No, he doesn't. That's he doesn't. Dresden's about 25,000. And uh, at the time, the, the, the Germans were saying 250,000. We know it's about 25,000 today. Yeah. Let me, be, let me be clear. Winston Churchill was the greatest. Oh, he got it. See? Hey, I think Rabbi Shmuley is watching, by the way. Mm -hmm. he, he just uh, tweeted the link to this live stream. Oh, nice. To our live stream. He just tweeted it. Nice. Hey, very nice to, uh, dear Rabbi, very nice to have you watching. It's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's good. It's great. I hope to have you here on, on the channel as well to talk to you in person um, about all of this. It will be very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Statesman of the 20th century. So he saved the world from I agree. Nazi terror. Yeah. That you could live in a country that is only around today because of the bravery of that man showing no gratitude is the height yeah, and, and I mean, it's 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 the entire. I mean, it's the entire world. I mean, look at what Hitler, look at what Hitler was doing, and he. But I mean, they, the Nazis. I mean, they were they were dropping bombs on the British, and my, you know, British could have stayed out of it, and they decided to to, to fight and keep on fighting, and uh, wow, yeah, I don't know what to do, man. Yeah, and, 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 and America, shame, on him. shame on the British, shame on the British. America had very difficult, big difficulties entering the war, and they eventually found a reason and entered it when they were uh, attacked in a provocation by uh, by Japan, and they really accelerated the end of the war by putting great pressure and great, uh, great, very resilient defense and also attack against uh, the German Nazi Third Reich. So. All of that was necessary, but no, here's Mohammed Hijab. He's like, no, they were all war criminals, war criminals. They were no, all war I, criminals. I condemn and, it. And think about what, it, I mean, think about how disastrous this could have been. I mean, if British had, had eventually backed down, then you, then, I mean, the Nazis came within what, 50 miles of taking Moscow. That would have uh -huh. been a, they would have been, a, they'd have had a one front war over that way. And they, they'd, they'd have won that one. So my goodness, you got, I mean, you got a leader that rallied his people Oh gosh, this guy's a disaster. And this is where Hijab lives. He'd be speak he'd be speaking freaking German right now. <laughs> having 
his his ancestors having fled Muslim lands to come to a great what Nazi Great Britain? My goodness, what is this? This is a mess. Well, um, I recently on a different stream went through the plans of Hitler and um, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Amin al Husseini, who was uh, the major leader of the the Palestinian nationalist movement before the creation of Israel, and he uh, met in secret with Hitler, and they made they made plans together uh, to you know of taking over the Middle East and exterminating the Jews altogether. And the Grand Mufti even said that, um, that that all the Arab leaders, he can easily gather them for the cause. And they are all on Hitler's side. Together, they can take out and exterminate the, the Jews and defeat uh, the British and the Soviets, and then together establish their great ideal. So things would have gone really, really differently in that, and, and, under that system. And the guy who's most responsible for stopping that hijab is condemning him. <laughs> yeah, well, why did he stop it? Why did he stop it? We wanted yeah, Hitler to help us. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been great if Hitler had conquered the world and united with uh we would have killed the Jews. jihadis. Yeah. The jihadi Nazi alliance would have been unstoppable. And to call all the to be fair, Hitler also said that uh he wishes he wishes that the, the Germans had Islam, not Christianity. Yeah, why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? Why not Islam when it glorifies the war and bloodshed? Why did we have Islam? That's what Hitler said. So yeah. <laughs> Stick on topics. 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 Stop interrupting me. Stick on topics. Defeated the Nazis. War criminals. Stick on topics. His parents. All the other people. War criminals. Let me ask you a question. Is wrong. No, no, no. Let me let me be clear. He's saying off topic when he just talked about dildos and vibrators and balloons. Look. Let me be clear here. We're talking about dildos and lube, not. Not war criminals and Nazis. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> off topic. Let me, off topic. Let me, let me, interrupt let me be other. clear. Muhammad Hijab trades in <laughs> falsehoods. Three hundred to one. What it are sure you does. talking 100 about? One hundred to one. And now he says that the, now he says the Jews are about to kill three million. I didn't say they're about to. I said the if. fact that this man considers you himself an Oxford academic. I was a rabbi at Oxford University for eleven years. This Did is a travesty. From there? Did you graduate from there? This is a travesty. Oh, he said there's a rabbi there. Did you, you graduate, from there? Graduate. Yeah. graduate? Did you graduate from there? Because I graduated from there. And I, I, I studied there. We have to mention and, this. We can't just and, move on from this and, without mentioning my graduation. Yeah, and uh, for anyone who's for anyone who's tuning in late earlier, we went through Muhammad Hijab. Like the the bulk of his case is based on this hundred to one ratio, which is either deliberate or just not being able to uh, understand what he's reading. Uh, it's it's a it, it the hundred to one ratio, and he says, you know, you, you vote you've killed uh, this number of Hamas and this many of civil and this many civilians, and so it's a hundred to one. The art the article, the article was specifically referring to Hamas commanders, not Hamas soldiers. In in so his his entire case is just completely bogus. Like his entire case for the entire exchange is based on him not being able to comprehend a title of an article. Unless he unless he did comprehend it and he's just lying. Yeah, yeah. Some people are saying, "Can you slow down the chat? It's too fast. I can't do anything about it, man. I'm, I, <laughs> I already yeah. have slow mode. Uh, I guess we're not just we're just not used to this the chat being that fast here. It's not yeah. on slow mode, man. Is there? It is on slow mode. What? Let me try. Oh no, you... I don't have I don't have slow mode because I'm special. <laughs> yeah, you're special. It doesn't apply to you. I have a rabbinical Did you graduate? I, let me answer. Let you me excommunicate. Let me answer. Let me answer. Well, you let me answer. I, I saw you excommunicated me, from the rabbis. I am a rabbinical. Right. Honestly, honestly, can I speak? This is pointless. Go on, go on. Rabbi Shluli, is there a limit to the number of civilians in Gaza <laughs> that Israel can kill to try and That's eliminate Hamas? That's a good question. Hamas? That's a great question. Yes. Shut up. Yeah. It's a good question. Let him answer. It's none of your business, man. I approve. I approve of this question. Since I run this show, <laughs> Pierce. Marian Ranta said, all I took away from the debate was dildos and shaking. <laughs> Osman's tomato ketchup said, Alan to deliver Islam had a golden age. Now it was it has golden showers, you see. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. For those who don't know what we're talking about, Mohammed Hijab uh, loves talking about golden showers yeah. and all of that. So yeah, the most perverted stuff. Talking about, uh, I mean, sends people these threats of rape and torture, and sends us messages about golden showers and getting on our knees and this and that. And uh, here, of course, it's a uh, lube and dildos, vibrators, all this stuff. And this is this is. <laughs> It's hilarious. The fact that this guy is so popular is just uh, is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. There is. Thank Thank you. Me, let me ask you. Not even one, not one beautiful Palestinian child should have to die because Hamas kicked out Mahmoud That wasn't Abbas. my question. And, yeah, and not one should have to die. What, 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 the answer to your question is that Hamas, if they surrender unconditionally, then Which all not of that... Do. Okay, fine. But let, them, then let, them, let them allow all the civilians... Look at, look, at this, look at this, look at this. He's just holding up the pictures now. While the rabbi is talking, he's holding up the pictures. Additionally, then Which all of that... Do. Okay, fine. But is let, them, the then let them... Look at this, look at this. This is what he does. He has to always be there and take the lead and interrupt and make a point. When he's interrupted, it is bad, but he always has to interrupt in one way or another. Let them allow all the civilians. Is there Israel, a Israel said that all the civilians can leave. All the civilians should go south. They beg them. And that's something that militaries never do. Churchill did not tell the people in Dresden, come on. And, and you, no, see, no, you, put, came, put, you came with all your notes. We, we get I'm, the point. I'm, not, I'm not here. We get the point, Mohammed. This, 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 this is all. I get the point. This is, this is all proof that he can't debate remember, me. Remember, so he has to use these Rabbi, images. No, debate me. We, we, we didn't Shirley, ask you to come on with all your exhibits. Rabbi Shirley, let me ask you a question. A member of the uh, cabinet in Israel was actually quoted as saying that nuclear weapons exactly. were an option that mm. Israel could use. A, no one's ever confirmed Israel has nuclear weapons. It's long been suspected. That seemed pretty clear confirmation. Why, why are you me. against nuclear weapons? Well, hang on. If you're, if you're not against Dresden, why are you against... Oh, my God. The Can't guys, let anyone finish a sentence. The moderator is asking a question. Can you shut up? Man, this guy is just insufferable. <laughs> it's, it's great that everyone is getting exposed to this now. Let me weapons. ask the question. Let me ask No, but why are you against it? I've done this before, this job. Let me do it. Go on. Okay? <laughs> So when that go on, go on, go on. I, I, I give you permission to continue, Peter. I approve. You can talk. You can yes. talk. Peter. You can talk now. This you is your talk show. Now. You it's can your talk show. now. It's, it's I've got right you on my. I've got you on my leash. I've, I've got you on on my leash on your show. I allow it. I will allow it. Yeah. The civilian in, in Gaza. What the hell are you thinking? That an Israeli mm. government member mm. threatens the mm. use of a nuclear weapon, right. which mm. would mm. obliterate yes. pretty much all of Gaza and everyone in it. Absolutely. Thank you for the question. If that were true, why hasn't Israel used nuclear weapons against Nasser when he no, invaded? It's true. Well, hold on, hold on. It's true. This guy threatened. Yeah, the, God. <laughs> and, and the answer is, and the answer is, no, no. I know the guy, and I spoke to him about it. His name is Amichai Eliyahu. Hmm. Israel has never carpet bombed any Arab. Hang on, Mohammed. Ever, 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 ever. Now, now, 1967 now. was preemptive. He was asked a question by a provocative interview, and he said, well, if you're going to bomb the same thing, it was like uh, it was a Mohammed Hijab type. You want to kill all the Arabs, three million people, just drop a bomb. He said, well, if you want to drop a bomb, drop a bomb. He was being dismissive and stupid. Mm -hmm. And he put out a statement the next day saying that never in history would the Jews ever even contemplate doing that. Let's remember one thing. Mm -hmm. And he was also, to my knowledge, correct me anybody if I'm wrong, he was also removed from, uh, he was after that statement because of the backlash and because of, uh, because it was completely unbecoming, I think Netanyahu uh, removed him from all meetings about the currently ongoing war. Are you saying it, something? It, no, it's just it's just weird that this gets brought up because we, we have to deal with this all the time. Anytime we say anything, people will point to something that some Jew said at some point, and then you well look, you see. Um, and here, but here, Pierce Morgan's doing it. They, it's a pretty, you know, it's an hour long discussion and so on. But he's going to talk about some guy saying it in a in in this context. Oh, well, if, if, if here we can just go nuclear, and then the guy takes it, says, "No, I'm not serious. We would never do that." And then this is somehow an issue that needs to be brought up in the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair, the guy is, I believe, he is the um, minister of some. Kind minister of heritage, nothing, not not related to to war or <laughs> or anything at all. But he made such a statement, and then it was he was rebuked for it. But yeah, 
It wasn't. Place, it, it wasn't threatened. In, but the day before, the Middle he East. Did, one second, Pierce. The day before, the he only did place, from, the from only the place in in the Middle East where Arabs have any freedoms, mm. Israel. The only place where they vote openly, okay. Israel. The only place okay. where Palestinian <laughs> women can dress the way they want. Why, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? It's true. Why is he laughing? This is a. Tr these are true statements. Yeah, and we've, I mean, we've been through this over and over again. Like, if, if the jihadis get their way, who takes over? Uh, Hamas, an, an ISIS-like group. Like, is that, is that somehow better in, in anyone's mind besides uh, the jihadis and hijab and, and his fans and so on? Yeah, yeah. One, Israel. <laughs> the only, and let's be clear. When, when, when Muhammad hijab gets up and says that we Palestinians want to be a religion of death, you know, I just got a haircut I'm coming here by an Arab barber here that. in London, and he said to me, "I hope you, I hope you defeat this guy because he doesn't represent us. We want to live. We want to have good lives. We want to be religious. Right. We want to eat halal, me ask, but we don't right. want to die for martyrdom. Me, you are let not me, a Muslim. Me, You're an Islamist. You're let an Islamist. Let me ask Muhammad. Let me ask Muhammad a question. Let me ask Muhammad a question. Health. <laughs> in hijab's defense, I think he's, uh, I think he's following uh, Islam more closely than uh, Rabbi Shmule is aware." I think I, I think I, I think basically Rabbi Shmule has interacted with a lot of nice Muslims, whereas we're thinking we've interacted with with the Dawa guys and we're thinking more in terms of the sources. And, uh, you know, you could say uh, you could say it about particular Muslims and what sources they accept and don't accept. But the sources that Muhammad Hijab and uh, and, and Sunni Muslims in general would would point to Hijab's pretty, pretty well in line with them, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. He is also. Um... Something we mentioned earlier, but Mohammed Hijab's uh, tweet at one point, which is still, which you can still find, to my knowledge, um, where he says, "I believe certain anti-Muslim women would wish they lived in the medieval period, a period where, if a war was won by the opposing side, it was conventional that people could be taken as booty." Some historical accounts actually say some women would dress up for the captor. So, um, so yeah, Western Western uh, Western women who criticize islam are basically uh you know deep down they're waiting for jihadis to show up and uh take them as sex slaves yeah 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 and they're, they're waiting to dress up and you know dress up super pr provocatively for the jihadis according to yeah. muhammad hijab which uh is a very revisionist okay i i guess to be fair he said some historical accounts uh not sure if i can verify those historical accounts at all but uh imagine the whole concept by the way of this uh of what he's talking about here of uh, taking booty um defeating the enemy taking the women as slaves and having sex with them this is not a consensual agreement. This is not something. This is not something where you go and uh, find women and you're like, "Hey, I find you attractive. Would you like to become my concubine?" And the woman is like, oh, "Okay, let me think. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I agree. No, you defeat these people through violence. You capture them. You obtain them, and then against their will, you intimidate them. Against their will, under distress, you then have sex with them." There is not very much of a difference between that and uh, raping somebody outside. Not too much difference. Or, you know, uh, using your status to intimidate a woman and rape her. So in, in both situations, you humiliate and capture somebody and, uh, you know, strip them of their freedoms and then have non-consensual sex with them. You rape them. That is what is happening here. And Muhammad Hijab has no problem with it. He's okay with it. He's cool. He, he likes it. Yeah. And the I mean, the only like possible defense is that, you know, the ancient world was kind of a different place. And sometimes you'd have the men, they all die in battle. And so the women would need to be absorbed or they, uh, they die or something like that. This is not, this is not the Islamic concept. Uh, they would, they would take the women, uh, rape them, have them as their sex slaves and then sell them, sell them at the, sell them at the next town and so on. So this is not uh, Hey, someone, someone it, it, it's a regrettable feature of war that there are women who uh who will now die unless they're taken in by the, their captors and so on uh it's it, no i mean it's it's women who are captured with their husbands they're not in they're not going to die and it's women you're not taking them in to take care of them you're taking them in as sex slaves and you're selling them in the next town yeah yeah if they are married their marriage is annulled because they now belong to you and you can do with them whatever they want that is the idea Hamas has 240 See, last week. Stop. 
Hamas has 240 hostages they took, including babies. Sure. Young kids. Sure. Grandmothers who survived the Holocaust. Yeah. I mean, an unspeakable further criminal Amazing. act. Yeah. We can agree, right? Of course. Why should Israel agree to any... Okay, so here he actually agreed that this is an unspeakable criminal act. Because that's what Piers Morgan just said, and he said, yeah, of course. So uh, <laughs> this just brings to mind something here, a big problem. Um, recently, somebody that we all know commented on people who condemn what Hamas did on October 7. Mm -hmm. Do you know who I'm talking about, David? Uh, that would be Daniel Hakikachu, who, uh, oddly enough, has been uh, one of Mohammed Hijab's biggest fans here recently. So I don't know how this is going to play out. It's very strange. Uh, Mohammed Hijab and Daniel Hakikachu have been very good friends lately. And Daniel Hakikachu has been blasting others while praising Mohammed Hijab. And here is a tweet, a very controversial one by Daniel Hakikachu, which says, Remember, the only people condemning October 7 are, are bloodthirsty Zionists. A Muslim who condemns October 7 is a hypocrite and a traitor to Islam. A non-Muslim who condemns October 7 does not believe Palestinians have a right to live and defend themselves against Israeli ethnic cleansing. 5,900 likes. So people who condemn what happened that day are bloodthirsty Zionists and traitors to Islam. But Mohammed Hijab just uh, condemned it and also said that it is an unspeakable crime. And it's crazy. I mean, think about this. I mean, uh, you're, if you're a Muslim and you say what Hamas did, uh, killing those people, women and children, the rape, every, if, you, if you say that that is wrong, you're a hypocrite and a traitor to Islam. This is very strong language. And uh, you may have followed it, but I, I don't know all the details, but Shamsi, Shamsi, who's a, who's a Salafi, but he's on the, uh, he's, I think he's on the nicer end of the Salafi spectrum. Uh, what, what, I, what I saw in the discussion on Twitter was that it, because, it was because he had condemned Hamas and said that Hamas was wrong and that he got beat up uh, just just on the street in, in London by Salafis who are basically have the same mindset as Daniel Hakikachu. Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I haven't confirmed that. That's just what people were saying uh, on on Twitter. But I mean, think about this. When, when Daniel Hakikachu says something like this, that has real world implications as far as his fans seeing someone say, hey, I condemn Hamas. OK, you're a traitor and a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You notice, by the way, guys, if you don't know how serious is when you call someone a hypocrite. I mean, there there are commands to wage jihad against hypocrites and traitors to Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're right. There was, there was a there was a video uh, that went around where Shamsi was beat up in the street by his, by people who uh, Shamsi said were um, Muslims who beat him up because of his opposition to what Hamas did. So um, they they took the word of Daniel Kikichu and others and and went there and beat him up. Now, I, to be fair, I wouldn't necessarily call Shamsi a nicer, <laughs> um, you know, Salafi or traditionalist. But what he is is he is a loyalist, uh, Salafi, or they they call them uh, Madhalis. They are people who are more in line with uh, let us have traditional Salafi Islam but let us respect the rulers in charge, the, the authorities in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and so on. No criticism of the rulers. Let's follow diplomacy and all that. So uh, that's their thinking. Daniel Kikichu and Mohammed Hijab are very much against that strain of Salafis. They don't want to be loyalists. They are the more extremists. So... Yeah, and guys, uh, for anyone who doesn't know who Daniel Hokikachu is, he is the world's leading defender of child marriage. He approves of wife beating. He approves of all the things that we uh, uh, we point out. Yeah, yeah. Powerful stuff. Powerful, powerful stuff. But he just condemned Let's Muhammad stop. Hijab. Let's all hope that Muhammad Hijab is safe from Daniel's goons. Hostages are still being kept hostage. Look, um, my position is very clear. They should fight man to man on the they ground. Are. On the ground. Well, they are. That, no, that fighting. That's exactly I, what listen, they're doing. That fighting, no one can. This is. Just, that's exactly this, what they're doing. I know. Man to man, they took hostages. They, excuse me. They took babies as hostages. He's asked me the question. Let him answer the question. You're, you're getting excited here. 
I know it's your uh, sexual you know, you time. You're the sexual. No, 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 no. You're back you're the to sex my sex life. You're getting overexcited. Leave it, please, Mom. Let me ask the question. He's getting excited with me. Let me ask the question. He always has to get excited. He's getting excited like like Daniel around a child. <laughs> like Daniel around an 11-month-old. Oh, he can't resist without going back to sex. And, no. uh, man. You guys answer them. Mohammed, answer my question. Why, if you're Israel, yeah, yeah, would yeah. you ever agree to a ceasefire if those hostages aren't released? I'm, I'm telling you what my position is. My position is man-to-man -man combat. Which is what they're doing now. No. That part of it is understandable. Do you understand? That's what, what they're doing. No problem. But what I think is not understandable. What so that's understandable. That's good. That's good. So Mohammed Hijab doesn't uh, doesn't blame or condemn Israel for going and fighting uh, Hamas and killing them man to man. So that's mm -hmm. that's 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 good. That's something hey, interesting. yeah. We should ask uh, we should ask Daniel Hakikachu. Say hey, Mohammed Hijab says it's completely understandable for the IDF to kill Hamas man to man. Do you agree or not, Daniel? Do you think he's a traitor to the Ummah? Well, it's not acceptable because you said, what's the proportionate response? Mm. That's the question you keep asking everybody. My answer to you is a proportionate response mm. is one where in which the ratios are not 100 to 1. It of isn't. The Excuse it's me. not, liar. And again, we debunked it at the very beginning. There is no such ratio. He made it up. He misunderstood it. So uh, his entire objection here is false flat is unfounded and, is broken and he doesn't get it and again it's it's most of his case that he appeals to throughout this entire exchange and rabbi shmule called him out earlier where, where you get where are you getting that from where are you getting that from and uh yeah it's uh it's made up yeah what he what he did is he references one report which says uh israel claims to have slain 60 odd senior and mid-level hamas leaders uh here Israel claims to have slain 60 odd senior and mid level Hamas leaders. And he understood this as uh, have slain Hamas members, not Hamas leaders, which is why he thinks most are civilians killed by Israel. And that's why they are keeping this, uh, this high ratio, like uh, 100 to 1. He misunderstood it. He completely misunderstood it, misrepresented it. And his entire argument is built on this. Hey, please. Where does that come from? I'll What's your source? Okay, tell me the source. The tell so me the source. IDF. Oh, here we go. Ah, yeah, can't go IDF. Yeah, sure. Can't tell me when. When did they say it? They said, uh, I know all the IDF no, no, sources. I know, I know Jonathan Daniel Hagari. I, Daniel Hagari said what? When? Okay, so no, let me say, no, 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 no. Excuse me. Say, when did he say we're killing yeah, uh, Palestinians two, 100 to 1? 10 days ago, and it's mentioned on a website. I'll tell you the truth is, they don't. I'll tell you, he never said no, 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 this is no, 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 no
It says here, Israeli airstrikes on Gaza have killed dozens, dozens of, of Hamas, Hamas commanders. commanders. IDF. And he says, look, I'm quoting the IDF. They says they've, Camille, they've killed 60 members of Hamas. Yeah. Uh, it's so, uh, so again, is. notice it, it's e he's either he either knows what the article says and he's being deliberately deceptive, or he is so incredibly incompetent that he he literally cannot read a headline and get it right. And he mentioned this so many times now during this conversation. I mean, we are halfway through, and he mentioned it uh, what thirty, several, forty times, several yeah. times, uh, and he repeatedly builds his case on this idea, on saying Israel says that they uh, do a one hundred to one ratio that they killed only such few, so few Hamas members. He got it wrong. The article doesn't say they have killed dozens of Hamas members. It says they have killed dozens of Hamas commanders. And this is what he prepared. This is what he thought would be a great idea. This is what he went with. This is what he prepared when he went to the show. Muhammad Hijab debunked in five seconds. So. Oh, you said that you called him out on anything. He has, no he has no sources. No one no can hear what you're sources. saying. Okay. Let me respond to him. This is a blood libel. Let me respond. The I'm Jews about, have a right to respond I'm about to a blood to question libel. Him. It's a blood libel. Here's the reality. I read that report. That was about Good. at least two weeks ago, yeah, right? Days ago. The numbers have changed a lot. Yes, they have. Israel now believe they've killed a lot more Hamas. We don't know exactly how many, because actually, how do you tell on the ground by the way, Piers, to the Hamas what, what, what fighter and you know, a member say, of the general population? Do you know, according to the IDF, mm. and we've done a, a study on the name that they put on X, mm. they have uh, they had 1,280 names that they put on X, mm. and according to Haaretz, they put, uh, Haaretz is, the, as you know, is a left-wing newspaper in Israel, they also put the names of those who have been killed. Guess what? Mm. According to them, 340 military have been killed, which means Hamas's ratio of combatant right. to non combatant is three to one. All right. Imagine Hamas is doing a better job in protecting civilians than Israel. Three I, to one. I would say. One. What in the. Wait, how no, how but, does that even. Yeah, by the way, notice he just admitted because he, 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 he did keep it hypothetical quite a bit with if someone is killing civilians, but sounds like he just acknowledged that they. Uh, they killed it mostly civilians. Yeah, and, and but the thing is, um, how does he even get to that conclusion? I don't even get it. Like, it that doesn't follow at all. He's saying that <laughs> Israel is killing with this 100 to 1 ratio. And I don't know if I heard him correctly, but it sounds like he was saying that of the 1,200 or so who were killed, uh, 300 and some uh, were IDF, and therefore their ratio is much better than the, uh, than the IDF killing ratio is even though that's something he just made it up because he doesn't he can't read a headline correctly yeah so here is actually what he's referencing um here is the haaretz article which um by the way lots of idiots out there uh deny that uh, civilians were killed they say all of them were idf or most were idf but here is uh haaretz publishing the names of people who were killed by hamas on october 7th and uh it is still limited because um so the IDF uh, is, or, or Israel is uh, identifying the victims. They are nearly through with the identification, but some names have not been cleared for publication yet. Uh, but those who have been cleared are here and you can filter it and you can see um, yeah, there are 773 civilians uh, were killed of those identified, soldiers 332. And then you have police, 59, emergency services, 13. So these are uh, the current numbers according to the information presented by Haaretz. This is what he is uh, referencing. But mostly civilians were killed, targeted and killed by Hamas. But it's not 100 to 1, which I made up. And by the way, um, there was also a huge difference here, which is not being discussed, but which I think, I don't know, is obvious to me. What Hamas did that day is not to randomly fire and then, you know, kill civilians in crossfire. What they did is to directly target civilians. Mm -hmm. so what Israel did, Israel is not targeting civilians. Hamas directly targets civilians. You could say, if you want to go that far and you want to accuse the IDF of killing civilians, you could say they are being reckless and they are, uh, you know, causing civilian deaths while they are firing at uh, at Gaza and at Hamas, which is weird because Israel uh, for weeks now told um, the people primarily in the north to evacuate and said you will die 
You will be harmed if you stay there. Get out now. It is a war zone. But uh, Hamas, on the other hand, did not do this. Hamas directly went and targeted civilians, directly shot at civilians. Mm -hmm. Man to man or man to woman or man to child, Hamas members went there and shot at the civilians and killed them there on the spot. And those soldiers are soldiers who are coming to protect those civilians. That's yeah. who, yes. And you've got, uh, by that time, Hamas jihadis um, on roofs and, and shooting out of windows and stuff. And the soldiers who are coming to protect people get killed as compared to Hamas soldiers who are hiding amongst civilians to get the civilians killed. Yeah, yeah. Hamas had the, had the primary goal of killing as many people as possible. So, yeah, there is not even a comparison. I would say that Hamas, by what they did on October the 7th... 101 versus 3 to 1. Wait a math, minute. Math. Wait a minute. Math. Wait a minute. Ordered That's math. That's math. Kim That's math, Pierce. They ordered, de facto, the disintegration of northern Gaza that we're seeing. Of course. And, and the, all the civilians and the suffering. Deaths, of course. Have you seen, have you seen this? And the death Pierce, of sure, sure. thousands Pierce, let of finish, civilians. Let me, let me finish, let they me. knew what was going to happen. I agree. Pierce, 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 That's why they should go. In 2005... Israel unilaterally withdrew from Gaza and allowed, Ham well, Hamas won an election in 2006. They could have built Singapore. You know what they did? They took larger foreign aid per capita than all of Europe received from the Marshall Plan. And look what France and Britain, look how beautiful London is. They took that money and they bought bullets and bombs. They did not build hospitals, not schools. They stole it from the Palestinian people. Ismail Haniyeh is worth $4 billion. I don't care about Khalid Mashal is him. worth He's $4 protecting I'm billion. Protecting him. <laughs> Can Pierce just shut up and... <laughs> Why is he jumping in for Mohammed the Jamal saying he's not protecting them? He is protecting them, basically. That's basically what's happening here. You have to take Hamas into the consideration if you want to blame the IDF here and you want to blame them for for uh, you know for for causing civilian deaths. And actually Mohammed Hijab just praised Hamas. He just praised Hamas, just not even less than a minute ago. But uh we heard it early. We heard it from from Hamas themselves. Hamas uh does not care about protecting their civilian population. They say that is the job of the United Nations and of um, of Israel. We don't care about protecting the civilian population. They are uh, they are refugees. In another speech, they said that they, that we are a uh, a civil a nation of martyrs. So it is expected that we suffer and that our people die. Nevertheless, we will continue doing this again and again and again. Hamas does not care about the Palestinian civilians, and they say it openly. And that's the problem. It's not Israel here. And one thing, one one other issue is, as Rabbi Shmuley points out, uh, Hamas had the means to develop something great. Israel was also in a position, Israel has been in a position for uh, nearly a century now, um, or three quarters of a century, where they are constantly under threat, constantly attacked. Did they spend this whole time spending everything on warfare? No. They built one of the most advanced nations in the world, which is a major contributor to global development, to science, and so on. They did this despite being under constant pressure, despite being constantly at war, constantly at conflict. Hamas and despite despite ha nothing. despite having despite having recently just been genocided. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Yeah. And so, and and Douglas again, Douglas Murray pointed out that this is part of the rage against them you know, from the from the jihadi perspective. We've got the final prophet. We've got the last revelation. We've got it all, <laughs> and we just can't make anything work. And these Jews come along, and suddenly, you know, they they built they build a a a, a superior a superior country to what we're dealing with, and yeah. it enrages them. By the way, you got a request to sing this. You don't know the song, do you? Oh, that's the way Allah Mo No, I don't, I don't know what that is. The song is That's the way Allah Allah Mo likes it. Allah Allah. Yeah. Oh, that's that okay, okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know that. <laughs> uh Petrus Ekstrin said <clears throat> Ekstein said this may be enough for half a coffee for AP, which is rabbi would just open each one minute statement by reading a different Quran first, like nine twenty-nine. Uh I should have a long conversation with the Rabbi Shmuley about that. Sanke said this should be called Pierce being a cuck for don't say that. This is very, 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 very disrespectful. Pierce Morgan is a 
trying his best here. Yeah, he is. Uh, I mean, by the way, that's that's his job's goal. Put people in situations where they don't quite know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Dehydrated Pi said Mimi's whole argument is 100 to 1 ratio. And again, that is complete a complete failure. Complete failure. Complete yeah, it would be it would be one thing if he had like a bunch of main points and that was some <clears throat> some insignificant sub point. It's his main point. Yeah, yeah. Dollars. Oh, why are you then about call him. him Call him I don't an evil to criminal. Him anything. You're I don't afraid to. He says he won't. You see, no, he will no, never I, condemn Hamas because he has condemned. No, it's good. I have. I have I've heard him, him do it. Excuse me. Excuse wait, wait, no, no, no. He can't. He oh no. Yeah, he just said he has. Right. So he did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, so. Because we've heard it, and he was obviously keeping things hypothetical because he doesn't want to upset the uh, the uh, Daniel Hakikachu crowd and suffer the same fate as Shamsi. But there, he just said, "What are you talking about? I did." So, so by saying I did, he is hereby affirming that he condemns some of us. That's what that's what I think I heard. Daniel Kikachu, Daniel Kikachu. Maybe we should all contact Daniel Kikachu and ask ask him what he thinks of this, because according to Daniel Kikachu, anybody who condemns what Hamas did on October seven is a bloodthirsty Zionist or a traitor to Islam. Yeah, someone can easily take take this, take out, take the relevant clips from here where he condemns Hamas and acknowledges that he condemned Hamas. And and you title your video, Daniel Hakikachu calls Muhammad Hijab a traitor to Islam and a hypocrite. Bam. Bam. Viral video. Bam. bam. Viral video. Bam, bam, bam. Let's see. Let's Viral go. video. Viral video. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, condemn, condemned, whatever. Yeah, we just showed it. So, yeah. Condemn so Hamas's attack. He's never times? condemned Hamas. Well, let me ask you, do you condemn Hamas? On what basis? Okay. Here we go. See? No, no, hold on. Well. Play the game. You accept now. Let me, let, me are... your, let me ask you a question. Every answer no, no, hold on, hold on. is on what no, basis? No, on what this? No, no, on what this? What's your no, source? No, no. Even answer. if you ask me, if you do condemn the IDF, I say specify your context. In what exact context do I do? You defend Hamas Excuse as a terrorist organization me. that just went and killed 1,200 people, burned them alive, yeah. beheaded them, uh, 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 and uh, uh, took 250 uh, hostages. Do you, calm, do you calm, condemn calm, them or calm, not? Calm, calm, do you condemn calm, them or not? Calm Ed, down. Ed, calm the down. You condemn calm, them or not? Calm. See, this is a, this is a debating tactic. It's, 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 it's two on one. Let him answer. Let him answer. Two on one. It's become two on one. Let him answer. Look at this. He's a victim. Now he's a victim. Now he's the victim. Of course. Now he's the victim. He's the victim now. They're all against him. It's two on one. And okay. notice the hypocrisy. He keeps dialing up the. He keeps dialing it up, yelling and stuff like this. And then, and then in response, well, calm down, calm down. Oh look, I'm a victim. <laughs> Big attack, two on one. Victim, but now it's two on victim. one. Stop okay. the victim. You, you love portraying yourself as a strong man. Now you're a victim. It's two on one. You probably could take two on one. So answer it. Answer the question. Is Hamas a terror organization you condemn? Yes, Is that no. something uh, you Is your Hamas said? a terror organization? Whoa. Look at you this. hear that? Look at this. Look at this. Look what at what a he scumbag. Said. Absolute scumbag. So everything could pass as funny that, that happened so far, all the sexual references. But pay attention to what he said here. I think he's going to repeat it. Can take you, two on one. You... It's a reasonable question because you okay. asked me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Hamas. Okay. Hamas. Pay attention to what he's saying here. Answer it. Answer the question. Is Hamas a terror organization you condemn? Yes, Is that no. something uh, you and Is your daughter Is Hamas said? a terror organization can that, take you, two on one. that you... It's a reason. It says your daughter can take two on one. He says, is that something you and your daughter probably take two on one? That's what he what he says. What kind of a suggestion is he making here? Uh, a sexual suggestion about the rabbi and his daughter, two on one. Now notice, I mean, my goodness, they're having a debate about a very important conflict that the entire world is interested in right now. And it's a, what about your daughter? You and your daughter take two on one. Ha ha. This is the, this, uh, so far until this point, I would say, this is funny. You know, this is entertaining. This is funny. Uh, you know, the, the, the references that he brings up, you know, it's, it's, it's quite messed up and completely not what it what should be part of a debate, but it's funny. But this here, this, this remark, I, speaking to the rabbi about the Israel-Palestine conflict, about the Israel-Hamas war, and then making a suggestion about him and his daughter, sexual, taking two on one. What what the hell is wrong with you, man? Yeah, this is then again, this is what you do. This is what you do in a situation like that. You go, ah, what is that? Mm, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so every time you mention, every time you mention daughter, every time you mention it, uh gonna gonna dial it up, gonna dial it up a job. That's how I would roll. <laughs>
assume it's two on one, you probably could take two on one. So answer it. Answer the question. Is Hamas a terror organization you condemn? Yes, Is that no. something uh, you Is your Hamas said a terror organization that, take you, two on one. that you. Look at him grinning, too, like he's funny. <laughs> only, yeah, only, amu only amusing to his fans. They love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a reasonable question. Uh, somebody said, I didn't hear daughter. Didn't you hear? He just said it again. He says daughter. You, you and your daughter. You and your daughter. Two one one. Yeah, that's something clear. Uh, you Is and your daughter Hamas said. a terror? You and your daughter. You and your daughter. Probably can take you, two on one. You... It's a reasonable question because you okay. asked me, so, 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 Is the so. IDF a terror? Okay, beautiful. I'll answer your question. That you know what's you know what's interesting? Um if he said that, if he said what he just said to a regular Muslim man, he would probably this would probably turn into a physical fight here. The the man would probably get up and beat him up. You know, uh, <laughs> from how sensitive this issue is among uh, Muslim families, Muslim people. Yeah, and guys, guys, keep in mind, keep in mind, these guys, these guys are setting the bar. I'm not telling you to act like they do, but it for for those of you who like to you know, keep things consistent and escalate to a, a comparable level with him and his friends. Uh, they think it's fine to talk about uh, someone's daughter taking two, two on one. Yeah. yeah. That, that, they, that's, that's their, that's where they set the bar. Now, to be honest, uh, I wasn't, I mean, I, I got much worse stuff from Mohammed Hijab personally, although I didn't expect uh, him to say this, on such a show in front of thousands of viewers on uh, to in front of Pierce Morgan on a, on a very on a very serious topic right this is a yeah. very serious topic and it's all oh dildos vibrators oh two on one your daughter yeah but, this, uh, this guy's scum man absolute scum absolute scum but this is the kind of stuff that he said to me in the past why would this incest endorsing islamophobe completely false who may be attempting to sexually lure his sister as we speak dedicate an entire channel trying to attack islam and when confronted for a fair debate rejects the offer more quickly than his sister would reject him if he offered wait didn't you agree to debate him and then he backed out this was before that to be honest. okay yeah this was before um, that. um since he sees it as morally acceptable, which is false, I wonder if the inbred apostate has any nephews, sons. No, I didn't mean nephews or sons. I meant both at the same time. So uh, <laughs> yeah. instead of pointing the finger at Islam with the Muslim community, a finger he will surely need to fulfill his conjugal obligations or indeed the incestuous activity he may be engaged in with mommy and sister, the apostate needs to thoroughly review his own morals. So this is the kind of stuff that he said to me in the past. Yeah, and he always, notice he always goes there and notice the reason he keeps going like this is his fans love it. We'd be in a completely different world if his, if his fans didn't approve of this. But I mean, this guy, this is a guy who has over a million followers on YouTube and they love, they love this. This is amazing. Yeah. And another thing here is uh, he thinks this is humiliating to me. It's, it's, it's very funny, actually, since he sees incest as morally fine, which, again, I don't. I wonder if inbred Rizwan has attempted to lure his mom into sexual activity. The arguments for deformed babies may put him off actual penetration. But what about using his massive nose as the main instrument? Would that be moral? <laughs> And that, and that, me. Everything is your wife, your daughter, your mother. Ha 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 ha. And guys, I mean, here's 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 the. This this is just reality. He's going to keep doing this, and then over time, people are going to escalate in response. And then what's he going to do? He's going to claim to be the victim. Look how everyone's responding to me. Look what they're doing. Oh my goodness, I can't believe they're talking to me like this. <laughs> Cry, baby. <laughs> I, I wonder if the rabbi saw the, these things here. <laughs> I might, show them to might be I seeing them now. Yeah. I should show that to him. You should be, you should be oh, sharing these over and over again on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Hamas is as much a terrorist organization. Yeah, uh, no, Hamas shouldn't be called a terrorist organization. See, if, the, uh, I told you. If, if the IDF isn't. Why? Okay. Because if See, it's either are. both or not. There we are. This is, this is either okay. both no, right. it's not. Just, no, it's not. Just extrapolate your position because yeah. you believe yeah. the IDF is then you're also saying that Hamas is. Let me tell you my position. And say it. No, no, I say it. He always has to twist it. Yeah. 
Of course, and he also says, if you ask me to condemn uh, the IDF, I would also say on, on what basis. I'm pretty sure if you asked him, is the IDF a terrorist organization, he would just say yes. You know. <laughs> it sounds like here, here, here a little bit later, it sounds like he's saying both are, I think. But 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 he um he always he always tries to keep it vague to try and appease the Daniel Hakikachu crowd, but and that is that is a tactic, right? He does it for a reason. He could simply sit there and simply ask the question: Do you think Hamas is a terrorist organization? Yes. There is no need at all to explain to make uh, you know uh, to to reference what what the IDF is by that standard and on on what basis they are terrorist organization. None of that is relevant. The question is very simple: Is Hamas a terrorist organization? Yes or no if he thinks yes nobody cares what his reasoning is then just say yes but he doesn't he has to twist it make it vague play around fool around so he doesn't have to you know uh, explicitly say they are terrorists and thereby anger his fellow muslim apologists this is all he does playing games dishonesty Say it. Say it. Let me, Rabbi Shmuley, let me get the answer. The unholy Shmuley won't let me speak. Right. I'm asking you a question. At least that was funny. That was the first one you did the whole thing. You could be friends. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Unholy Shmuley. I like how he said this was actually funny. Get the answer. The unholy Shmuley won't let me speak. Right. I'm asking you a question. At least that was funny. That was the first one you did the whole thing. Maybe we could be friends. Let me ask I love how he said, um, at least that was funny. Given you've already stated you believe <laughs> I, the IDF is a terror organization, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am, I to, no, no, no. am so, I to assume legally or morally? You believe, legally or morally. Well, hang on. Go on. Am I to assume that you believe Hamas is now? No, this, is one, this is my position, but you have to give me 10 seconds at least to answer, right? Legally, I think you shouldn't call Hamas a terrorist organization if you're not calling IDF a terrorist organization. That's my position. But Nobody cares what people... The, the question is about you. You see why he doesn't answer the question, right? The question is, is about you. What do you think? But he can't answer the question. He has to twist it. Has to take it to the IDF again. Hold, Please do both. Hold on. Call them terrorists. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let him answer. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. Because if the, as we said, the UN definition of what a terrorist organization is mm -hmm. to kill civilians mm -hmm. in order uh, in order to achieve a political objective. That's not what the definition is, by the way. So, however, on a moral and yes. theological, philosophical yes. level, I agree with Rosalind Higgins, mm -hmm. who was uh, the justice of the International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, the Court of Justice (ICJ). A British justice, by the way, she was a Holocaust survivor as well. She was Jewish, yeah. and her position is that she believes that the word terrorism or terrorist is actually useless. And she says that it's. A, I'm putting to her. Oh, I, can you answer my question? He's going on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So I'm answering your question. So I'm saying that as a moral construct, I think it's a neo-colonial social construct used by people in order to, to label some people as terrorists and other people as not. Me, so okay. as a moral category, okay, yes. okay. I don't designate it as a moral you know, category. You know, but you know, I don't it's Oh, I, I would actually, I would, a, after seeing him completely get so many things wrong while supposedly citing sources, when he cites a source that I haven't looked up, it's like, like, I, I don't trust him at all at this point. When he, again, when he will cite an article as a proof for his main case and all, literally all you have to do is read the headline, let alone the rest of the article. Um, and he can't get that right. And then he's, oh, what about this woman who said this? I would, I mean, maybe it's like, I, I would have to say Muhammad Hijab, anything you are quoting, I need to see it in advance to take it seriously because I can't, I can't take your word for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really genuinely interested in, uh, so there, um, there is no one UN definition of terrorism, but there is apparently, uh, a definition that was established, uh, during a certain, uh, resolution, Resolution 1566 in 2004. And I really want to see if, if he's actually right about that definition. So, Legal category. do you believe, yeah, as do you a, personally, Mohammed, yeah, Hijab, yeah, do you yeah. believe that the IDF and Hamas are both terror organizations? I think, yes. If, if, you, yes? if, you, say, if you say yes to IDF, you should say yes to Hamas. So, yes. If you say no to IDF, that's what, I'm Hamas, asking you what yeah. you Hamas believe. Is a terrorist organization. Uh, what if, you if, believe. God, he again responds with if you say nobody is asking that. We're asking what you think. Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's like if I say, uh, uh, "Hey, Muhammad Hijab, do you like donuts?" And he goes, "Well, if you're saying no, do you like donut? Well, you know, if so and so like no, do you?" It's, it's just weird. <laughs>
If you say yes to IDF, okay. you can say yes no, to Hamas. Let me yes. no, ask you what you believe. Yes, I believe legally, according to the definition, yes. if you say yes to Hamas, okay. you can say yes Pierce, to Pierce, IDF. Pierce, 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 yes. Pierce. He has still not answered the question. He has still not answered the question. This is like you're asking me, uh, do you think stealing is, uh, is, 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 is bad? Well, well, legally, legally, I think if you say that this is bad, then yes, that is also bad. Yes, yes. I haven't answered the question hereby. I hereby haven't answered the question at all. That's what he did here. Chris, we could go on for the next. I've got to, we are going to. Well, if you say no to the we idea, go on for the next hundred years. Fine. We're going to. We're going yeah. to the next. We're going to the next block. Uh, but that's interesting. But morally, I don't believe the category has any weight. No, but you morally have. It has no designation. But, but you have. All right. So morally, it has no weight. So therefore, according to him. Hamas is not a terrorist organization, and the IDF, I guess, is also not, unless he wants it to be a terrorist organization. That's it. So none of this makes any sense. This entire conversation is completely useless. Mohammed Hijab doesn't blame uh, any side here or doesn't think that there are any moral implications here. What is even the point? This is just complete dishonesty. He's just arguing from a, from a, from a point of dishonesty. There is no reasoning with this guy. No, and, and, and we, we already we already know that we've seen that before. Like uh, his main goal in any interaction is to show that he's strong and and dominant to impress his followers who are impressed by that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm going through the resolution right now, and I, I don't see a single um, single definition. I don't know if I if I'm just not paying attention to it. C concerning threats to terrorism, terrorism, all its forms. In Deeply concerned by the increased number of victims of children and so on. Counterterrorism. I'm skimming through it as fast as I can, but I just don't see any definition here. I search for any, anything that mentions terrorism, but it doesn't actually mention a definition. And the United Nations doesn't have an official definition of what terrorism is. So of I, I Hijab just said it. <laughs> and you know you can trust whatever Hijab says. Because yeah. I mean, he's as accurate in his source citing as uh, someone as great as Daniel Hakikachu. Yeah, and here we are at the end of it. So if somebody uh, wants to correct me, if I'm just not, if I'm just missing it, and there is actually an official UN definition of terrorism, just please point me at it and I will correct it. If Muhammad Hijab is right about it, I will acknowledge it. If not, then we have to point it out, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, which is that you believe they're both terror organizations. I believe that according to the law, absolutely. Okay, and that's interesting to yes. me. According to the law, absolutely. Pierce, he didn't answer the question, bro. <laughs> Pierce Morgan, he did not answer the question. Okay, let's but I have to say, no, I have wait, to say, wait, let's come to When the you next... call the IDF a terror organization, the IDF keeps 1.8 no, million Arabs alive opinion. in Israel. To one the Hamas, the, this is invention. 101, he's back to 101. Get more pictures out, it's Stop unbelievable. Rabbi, this this is how you lose your a debate the debate when you bring... I brought your nothing with me. You could be this. You could be like this. My son is... You could be dead like that. My son is in the IDF. Now he's talking about his son. Daughters, sons, mothers, wives, cousins, that's all he talks about. He's going to make another sexual reference here. I think that uh, I noticed earlier a very messed up one. So. You know, like talking about how you want to do martyrdom, you're really risking your well, life here, Ma. This, you talk, you're big talk. Your you son talk could a be lot. dead right now. Like you, attack, you, attack, okay. you attack Ben Shapiro's your, wife. Your son is an you, 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 actually post, right you actually posted could a clip right saying now. that... With someone else saying that Islam you like teaches your you how to get, how to get women bag? to listen to their husbands. Your this is all false, false bravado, false, false machismo. Your son, if you're Mindy, a real man, go to dead. the Middle East and fight. What are you doing what in do a television right, studio? Let right, me move to the last one. Which you is, should be there. You, you have the right to fight. No, 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 I'm not. You, you use your son to human shields. You try to bully people in debates and it's being allowed. He's using his son as a human shield. I want to move to the last. God, this is. It would be funny if I'd like to see Pierce just like give recaps along the way it's like uh okay muhammad so far we've got your case uh 101 totally made up uh dildos uh lube uh vibrator in the pocket and uh now sun so thank you hijab for this uh lightning discussion Last ironically themed subject is peace possible okay uh not on this basis right but we've got to try and get to peace so you get a minute each again uh, Mohammed, you'll go first uh, this time. So you get a minute from now. Okay, so I just want to say that this man is... No, no, it's peace possible. <laughs> Instantly, this man, <laughs> this man, is peace possible? Well, let me start by this man talking about his his daughter and his son, ha -ha, and the vibrator in his pocket. 
and lube, lube, hundred to one. Uh, what's very I funny? I now rest that? my airtight case. What, what, what's 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 funny? <laughs> what's funny is Rabbi Shmuley has been trolling Mama uh <laughs> since the debate. Uh, he he posted this. this. Mohammed Hijab seen here helping us promote our new kosher sex mojab line of sexual products. <laughs> He's emerged as our single most successful pitchman for kosher sex lubricants and vibrators, which he repeatedly brought up in the Pierce Morgan debate on Israel in recognition of his nonstop and obsessive and absolutely bizarre references to these sexual products in the debate, which we trust have been too useful to him to address any issue he may be having. <laughs> We are actually launching the new, the the all new Mojob line of products over the new few days, next few days. We are serious. Stay tuned. Now is the time for you to get your Mojob. Hey, didn't didn't you start? <laughs> didn't you start the term Mojob back in the day? I did. I did. But <laughs> classic. It, it's Never it's easy. That. It's easy. I was, so maybe you know, maybe you could independently get to it. I don't know. I I, 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 I have to say because this this is funny, but I have to say like. Uh, you know, we we want to we want to behave. We generally want to behave better than these guys, but at the same time, it, it's like that they they only they only re, they only respect and respond seriously to people who kind of you know put them in their place. So, I have to say, if if uh, I don't know, there's part of me. It's like, hey, things are inappropriate. We need to we need to keep our behavior at a at a good level. There's another part of me going. He just talked about this guy's uh daughter you know two on one and son dying and so on i i don't know there's a part of me that says photoshop that microphone with something else that that muhammad and job's <laughs> been talking about for a while since you're since you're you know this this is an ad and Any, oh. hey anyone if if anyone if uh if anyone who's watching right now if anyone who's watching right now uh wants to, <laughs> we still got around three 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 thousand that's anyone wants idea. to use their photoshop skills that, that's a good David, you should help i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do it but if anyone were to do it that would i don't know if that would you, be you should help with the marketing that's a brilliant idea i i didn't think of that at all <laughs> wait um oh yeah here's another video that came up let's see I'm being stopped all over the streets of London. Here I am with my daughter Hannah in front of uh, Tower Bridge, which I consider the most beautiful bridge in the world. Hannah doesn't? No, not exactly. <laughs> but we are here to announce we're so grateful to our brother, Muhammad Hijab, for continually... Thanks, Muhammad. Thanks, Muhammad. <laughs> for continually promoting wow. Hannah's uh, kosher sex company, uh, based on the book that I wrote, and especially the lubricants that he spoke about. Which oh, that's say, right, the super slippery ones. Super slippery ones. <laughs> Couldn't handle the facts, so we had to go after my dad's kids. So in honor and in recognition and in gratitude yes. for Muhammad continually giving your company international promotion. What are we doing, Hannah? We're having a discount, a Muhammad hijab discount. There's a new it's Muhammad hijab discount code. You go to kosher.sex, right? Kosher.sex. At the checkout, you can put in Mo hijab. Mo hijab. And M O H I J A D. Okay? <laughs> so your sex can be both holy and hot. Right. Or, or, he, or, or, or it could be. Listen, it's, might, it's even better the way Muhammad said it. It could be unholy shmoli. <laughs> unholy yeah. shmoli yeah. sex yeah. is even better than the... <laughs> yeah. They actually started a, a, a discount code Mohe Job, yeah. uh, which you can enter to get a 10% discount. <laughs> I like how I like how he's responding to this uh, whole thing. He could he no, <laughs> notice he could he could have been walking out and 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 uh, complaining and claiming to be the victim, and instead he launches the Muhammad Hijab uh, line of products and uh, and the disc <laughs> then the discount code. Uh, his, his daughter, I mean his daughter's his, his daughter's doing a great job too, just making fun, <laughs> making fun of these guys. But I mean, seriously, I mean, I mean, this is amazing. You've got Got, you've got almost two billion Muslims in the world. Who gets who gets pushed forward as their representative to debate Rabbi Shmule? And it's it's this guy. It's I mean, I mean it's Muhammad Hijab and the vibrators and the dildos and lube. And what about the daughter taking two on one? Ha ha! And this is in a discussion about the Israeli uh, Hamas conflict. <laughs> I love this guy now. Man. Oh, I love. Uh, <laughs> I love. I love everyone involved. I love. I love Pierce. I love Pierce for setting these things up. I like Rabbi Shmuley for for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for 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 standing up to hijab. I like hijab for for completely embarrassing uh, anyone with his mindset. 
uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, he is also uh, a thing he referenced earlier in the conversation, in the discussion, where Mohammed Hijab talks about Ben Shapiro's wife. I just want to speak to your wife for a second. Yes, I'm speaking to Ben Shapiro's wife. <laughs> ben Shapiro's wife, whatever your name is, just know your husband is a coward. <laughs> just know this is the real man. Look at me. Ben Shapiro's wife, please look at me. This is Go the your husband. Is Golden showers. But this, I just want to speak. Sorry. This is ridiculous, man. No. Yeah, I don't like it. He did the same thing, by the way. Um, when he was, like, years ago, he was fighting with me. Uh, and then because of me, when other people came to be in, be involved, other ex-Muslims, uh, he started fighting with them and started harassing them and their wives. And he did that very same thing. He he even printed out a photo of himself and was like, uh, this is uh, this goes to the wives of, uh, you know, uh, AP and Abdullah Samir and Abdullah Gondal. I just want to show them what a real man looks like. You know, uh, your your husbands aren't real men and stuff like that. I recommend getting new husbands or something, some dumb stuff like that. He did that before. He does it now again. This is just the, you know, the 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 the, the, the disgusting, embarrassing, personal, very low level that he will always drag it down to. Yeah, and as as often as as he drags it to that level. With with uh, with Rabbi Shmule, with Ben Shapiro, I know they are nicer. They are nicer than uh, than I am, so they're not going this direction. But uh, we've been dealing with this guy for so long. There are certain things that his community only takes seriously. And uh, here we go. <laughs> oh, by the way, Rabbi Shmule posted a clip of what we are doing right now. Now this will be. Uh... Us watching, no, it will be him watching us, watching him watching us, something like that. That's pretty but, meta. I don't yeah. know what's going on there. Let me ask you about Hamas. I want to first, before you do that, I want to commend you, Piers, honestly, because you're bringing the second time. <laughs> 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 Look at that. We've we've discussed this a million times. When I mean, it's they've got two. They've got two tactics. They've got two of the traditional five uh, tactics for manipulating people. It's uh, you just shower people with praise when they do what you want and you heap abuse on them when they don't and you uh you you rapidly condition them into behaving as you want which is why it's exactly why muhammad hijab was smiling at the beginning in the last discussion what what why did what why you call me controversial why you call me controversial how dare you how dare you do that and complain like a big baby and then for this one pierce introduces him exactly as he wants and then he sits back see and then and notice here he's praising him he's praising him for uh for helping him here so awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was a good point yeah, and he said, Rabbi Shmuley, I have nine children. I know when a child is having a temper tantrum. Uh, Muhammad Hijab is a man child who throws temper tantrums when he doesn't get what he wants. Uh, by the way, Rabbi, you tagged the wrong account of me, which is also my other account, but my main account is just apostate prophet. So just tag that and follow me there. It would be nice to communicate and to have conversations together. Uh, yeah, what are you doing, David? I don't know. People, I was making a plane, but then people started saying, "Eat it!" And uh, and uh, and again, guy, we do not act like this. Ordinarily, it would it would ordinarily. I mean, I interacted with uh, with Muslim friends for a long, long time. We're getting down to where we have people who uh, want to act like this, and I don't know. It's just it's just it's just a line for me. I see uh, I see a guy having a discussion. He instantly starts going after people's. Uh, daughters wives mothers sons all of that there's there's the only thing they ever see again i do not i i think it's ridiculous to have the need to go in this direction at the end of the day the only thing that makes them sort of say okay we can't stop do we, we need to stop doing this we need to stop behaving in this way the only thing that ever makes them stop and we have seen it make them stop over and over again is when it is leading to disgrace for their profit and their book. I don't care about their profit. I don't care about their book, but uh, we have seen this. We have seen it work over and over again that Muslims will eventually tell them, hey, you need to dial this back because when you do this, it leads to this and we don't want that. It's the only thing that seems to make them stop and think about what they're doing. So, I don't know. Very, very disrespectful. Very, very terrible. Very, 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 very terrible. Very, 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 very. Tastes like pesticide. <laughs> it's growing on me. It's growing on me though. Once you once you get a once you get a taste for Quran plain, 
to no, you're just speaking about the subject. I got to hanker it. He's been attacking me. Don't attack, attack him, Percy. We're not going to use it. It's pointless. Okay. I'm going to take it just for the record. We'll put it on YouTube so people can see it all in context, right? But on my show, I'm just not going to have half of this, what I thought was going to be a serious debate, taken up with YouTube personally abusing Von each other. Bismarck it's pointless. Said, excuse me. Von Bismarck said, I repay people with the currency that they pay me with. Right. If he's going to come with that hominem, as you've acknowledged, I can come back right, right, but you did, and I, you shouldn't have done, because you had the high moral ground. No, 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 you don't. This man no, is bringing up Jewish sex non You've both been as bad as each other. You've both been as bad as each other. Where have you even mentioned that? On the personal stuff, you've been as bad as each other. Seriously, that came out of nowhere. It's like he's saying that he's doing this as a retaliation, but he is the one who started bringing up sex out of nowhere. Yeah, like, for real. Each other. Let's start again. You get a minute from now. Is peace ever possible? Go. Justice is a prerequisite for peace. In South Africa, uh, when the apartheid system, which we know for a fact Israel is an apartheid state because it has laws like the right of return, which only, only, only allow Jewish people to come into the country. And if they convert, by the way, to Christianity or to, uh, to uh, Islam, they are stripped from that right, which is, it meets completely the definition of apartheid as poor. Well, pause it, pause it, pause it. What, what, that, what does that have to do with apartheid? Many Muslim countries have similar... Uh, yeah. No, I was going to say that. You got, we've got video from... His Dawa partner, <laughs> Ali Dawa, saying you're dead. You're dead if you're leaving Islam. And he's saying, oh, if you convert to another religion, you don't have the right to return. You're dead. You're, I mean, you are dead, according to according to these guys. Yeah, yeah. Many Muslim countries have, have some... By the way, lots of Arab nations right now have laws in place according to which if you have an uh, Israeli passport, you cannot enter the country. If, or some some countries even have um, rules that uh, if you if, if Israel is on your passport, so you don't have an Israeli passport, but you recently traveled to Israel, then you may not enter that country. So uh, there is discrimination based on that. Then uh, there are Muslim countries where there is discrimination based upon religion. Then in his ideal world, there would be uh, apostates or people who criticize Islam who speak about it would be executed or expelled, according to his uh, rather outlandish reformist uh, you know, point of view. So what exactly is he complaining about here? It's, it doesn't make any sense. He is being hypocritical once yeah. again. Every, yeah, pretty much. I mean, everything he says, everything he says, if we took it seriously, would, would wreck his profit. We all know about this speech here. Really? Well, Adam is taking the mick out of you. This is a part of our religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? yeah. There's a reason why there's a capital punishment. Because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt. And we're proud of that. that. Not individuals going and doing it themselves like uh, idiots. Yeah. No. Under an emir, it is, it is done. Step. And we, you know what? We'll be watching. We'll be watching. We'll be watching. Because if you're going to cause corruption in the land, that's going to cause more uh, damage to the society as a whole because the Sharia didn't come to protect an individual's right. Hey, can I drink alcohol? Yeah, sure. Drink alcohol, uh, run someone over, kill them, set the, uh, all this kind of chaos. No, Islam says the right of the community is greater than you individual wanting your right to freedom, which is BS. BS. Absolutely BS. Yeah? Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, apartheid. This is apartheid. Apartheid. It's very clear. No, I mean, think about this. I mean, the entire goal of an Islamic society is uh, Jews and Christians have to be subjugated. We yeah. have to be second class citizens paying tribute money to our Muslim overlords. And we have it. We have it better than everyone else. Atheists, polytheists, they're all it, for them. It's convert or die. So according to hijab's definition, this is uh, all, Islam promotes nothing but apartheid states. Yeah. And according to the UN Convention 1973, it's an apartheid system. And as a prerequisite of an apartheid system, you have to be a racist. If you support that, you're a racist. No doubt about it. No, so Muhammad's a racist. 1973 apartheid law. If Muhammad was a racist, Al Dawa is a racist. Prophet Muhammad was a racist. Muhammad Hijab himself is a racist. It's, it's very strange. Man. Daniel yeah, Akikachu, yeah, yeah. they're all racist, according to oh, Muhammad racist. Hijab. Racist. 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 South Africans have been displaced. If they have been displaced <laughs> by. <laughs> this is Muhammad. This is Muhammad Hijab. Uh, so, so after. After uh, going after the, the the daughter, the son, everything, now he's now this is Muhammad Hijab pulling the race card. Yeah. 
the whites and then they were trying to come back into their country and they were not allowed them. And then you ask them, is peace possible? That's not the question we'd be asking them. We'd be asking them, is justice possible? And that's the question that we're going to be asking because he can all uh, sit there and talk about all these things where the IDF, his son Mendy is being attacked by, vibrated by the, the rockets and he's selling him and his daughter selling vibrators to the public. <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessary thing at the end again. I hope you keep that in. Uh, <laughs> Go, go back. I, I, I wonder if he actually thought about this before he went on the show or if he just came oh he pl- no no but, he planned that that's all planned but <laughs> and that's the disturbing part he planned he plans this stuff he sits down with ali dabo okay what can i say here yeah. oh what you got to say is you got to bring up you got to bring up the vibrators and the dildos and you got to bring up this lube and talk about his daughter yeah no who care about the issue just say 100 to 1 ratio just keep saying that yeah what I, I find funny, Pierce Morgan's reaction to it is like, yeah, okay, unnecessary thing at the end again. Uh, it, it reminds me of high school, like uh, high schoolers being completely stupid and weird and the teacher being like, okay, yeah, that was completely unnecessary, completely uncalled for. Yeah, please stop. Please don't do that. It, it's like here, Pierce Morgan is really trying to, I don't know, discipline this little man here, but he won't. Let's play this again. I'll be asking because he can all uh, sit there and talk about all these things where the IDF, his son Mendy is being attacked by, vibrated by the, the rockets and he's selling him and his daughter selling vibrators to the public. <laughs> Unnecessary <laughs> thing at the end again. I hope you keep that in. Uh, Rabbi keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi's got a good sense of humor and all. <laughs> oh, man. He actually came up with that. No, I mean, what, what's amusing is... That- it's like it, that a job goes there, right? That's what the music, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like so this, random. This right? is the guy. This is the this is the uh, this is the Oxford grad who that we're all supposed to take seriously. But it, it sounds like uh, you're right. It's, it's so it sounds like he prepares the line because it doesn't make much. It 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 comes out of nowhere. Yeah, he probably prepares it in, in advance. He tries to yeah. fit it in somewhere. Even yeah, figures out where he can work it ran- in mm-hmm. when it's totally random. It it appears completely random here. <laughs> One minute on, is peace ever possible? Of course. I revere countries like the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, where I've spoken several times. I am safer as a Jew wearing a yarmulke in Dubai and Abu Dhabi than I am on the campus of Columbia University or even Harvard these days. Mm-hmm. The Mohammed bin, bin Zayed. You know what? That might be true. Mm-hmm. Ayad is just an incredible leader. Um, I saw in... The Gulf uh, states. Uh, to be clear, I I wouldn't I wouldn't trust that that claim as much right now. Uh, maybe you know, re, but I, I yeah, that might have changed since uh, since October seventh. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I would say uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, uh, is probably much significantly more disciplined in um, vigilante action and things like that in comparison to other countries. If you go with a yarmulke to uh, to to uh, I don't know to to Pakistan right now, you're probably not very safe. But United Arab Emirates might be different in that regard. Um, that Mohammed Hijab rejects, but the Islamic world embraces. That's why they made peace with Israel. It's a technologically advanced, tolerant, forward-looking, very traditional, very religious Islam, and that's why. Picture. And that's why. And that's why they've made peace with Israel, and peace will continue to be made. All of these countries are praying for Israel. Look, to can't let him finish from us, because Mohammed Hijab is an outlier. He's an extremist, and his views, whether his views as he represents them at Speaker's Corner of things about women being subject. Okay, okay. But let me just let me just be clear. All of the Arab countries want Hamas destroyed. And that's and the proof is when they had their conference, Riyadh, last week, they did not even okay. once call to bring in any evacuees because they want Israel to establish a more democratic okay. regime in Gaza, which will they will do. Israel is winning this war. To both of you. Is this true? There, there are lots of Muslims who have condemned Saudi Arabia and the Arab uh, countries because um, they actually refused to uh, take measures to prevent, to, to, to take more drastic measures against Israel during the current war. So people like Dan Nikikichu and others have explicitly condemned these uh, Arab nations. And that is a sign of hope. You're right. Just give me a very, very quick snapshot of in 20 years' time how peace could have been achieved. Very quickly. Okay. The first thing is, when Israel withdrew in 2005, almost 20 years ago, um, if Hamas had not come to power, if they had taken all the international aid that they got, um, 
tens of billions of dollars, peace would have been achieved by building businesses, entrepreneurship, schools. How do we get there now? Okay, we get there now by destroying Hamas, making sure that there's democratic elections, let the Palestinian people, not Mohammed Ijab, not Shmuel Ibtayak, not Peshmerga, I mean, you both agree Hamas them, should be gone, right? They, we can they, agree on this, right? They, we agree they, that they, there should they, be a bigger need, Palestinian need, authority with armies need, and airplanes. You in a moment, and, and, and we, we, we agree. agree. Nobody we agrees. Agree. Nobody, <laughs> nobody agrees. <laughs> You say that nobody agrees with that. <laughs> we all agree that that, <laughs> that the Palestinians should have a massive army that they can use to exterminate Israel. Yeah, no, 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 no nobody wants no, that. No one said that. Nobody wants that. Don't have that. Don't do that. They shouldn't have that. They should have no military. It should be a demilitarized country. That's it. If at all. Yeah, you are not you are not responsible <laughs> enough to have a military. That yeah, says something yeah, about yeah. you. And, we and, do and have way, agreement. And the way and we tanks. have, and the way and we tanks. have, and the way we have, they should have tanks in the history tanks. of the world. No and nukes, have, nukes. They should have nukes. Have ever gone to war? That's what Can you imagine if suddenly the Palestinian territories, Gaza or the and the West Bank, if they suddenly obtained um, weapons, equipment, powerful enough to destroy, overcome, or and or destroy Israel? Can you imagine? What they would do with this? Oh, and I mean, their, I mean, their I mean, goal was on October seventh. They announced their goal was to, you know, do the ultimate attack and take down Israel. And th their internal goal during the operation was to kill as many people, civilians, as possible, while also taking uh, hostages as much as possible. So, if they suddenly had the power, what would they do? And the creepy part is they got way more advanced here than they they were in in uh in in recent years and and so it's just like okay well if you've got everyone sending them piles and piles of money and you have nations like iran and so on backing them and they've got uh and endless tunnels and so on and they can get this stuff in there gosh like wh what what are things going to be like if israel does not crush hamas Right. Yeah. If you if you don't crush them, what what are things like two or three years from now? It seems like they're if they don't crush them, they're going to be more advanced and be able to kill way more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no way that you can make peace with that. The most re in, in a realistic situation, Hamas has to be eradicated. That's it. And as as much as people around the world say ceasefire, 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 no free free, it's it's. It doesn't matter. Israel will probably not stop. They will go through with the mission, and I hope they do because it is probably the best for everyone, everyone involved. Hamas needs to go. Yeah, Hamas, turn yourselves in right now. To face judgment. Hand over the hostages. Let's bring this to an end. Inshallah. Why, since the end of the Second World War, there's been no war here in Europe. The Queen's Island said, can you review some of Corey uh, Gil Schuster's interviews with Palestinians, Gazans, and Israelis? Be interested for your thoughts. I follow him. I follow that channel. He conducts street interviews with Palestinians and Israelis. Very insightful. I could do that sometime. Oh, we should go there and do some street interviews with uh, with Hamas. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> we need to see a democratic Gaza. Hamas won an election in 2006. There's a then war in Europe all... now, by the way. In Correct, Ukraine. because it's against a tyranny. No, I said no two democracies ever gone to war. Putin is not a democracy. He's a tyrant. In the history of the world, no two democracies have ever fought a war. If we have a democracy in Gaza. So what does peace democracy... look like in 20 Pe years? Peace looks like the Arabs voting for their rulers voting and backing them, uh, seeing Israel as a partner, not being humiliated that because of this tiny little right. red dot surrounded, that solution? that's a humiliation. Two state solution? I, well, you know, uh -huh. I, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. If, if, if two state solution is a Hamas state wanting to eviscerate Israel, uh, he doesn't God. believe in it. But he doesn't he believe doesn't in believe a two state solution. He believes in a final solution. No, that's no, what no. really scares okay, me. Okay. You don't believe in a two state solution. You believe in a final solution. The way you speak about Jews, you believe in a final solution. And it's scary. I like them. Do you believe in a two state solution? I love Jews. If that second state is Mexico and Canada, if that second state is Gaza, then of course not, because it'll just become another genocidal enemy wanting to wipe right. Israel off the map. That's pretty unequivocal. Quite clear. Little uh, little side note, Black Angel did send you a photoshopped picture of Hijab. <laughs> <laughs> really it's it's Man. just it's just insane because like the the nice christian side of me is like no you can't do any sort of that and it's like <laughs> it's it's like the it's like the situation with with israel and hamas it's like no you can't be dropping bombs and stuff like that that's messed up but oh look at what you're dealing with here uh, uh, oh yeah 
yeah this is this is good this is pretty good uh this is pretty good this could be used for the advertisement oh uh, you're sharing it i was just telling you <laughs> this could be used for the advertisement no. uh so no. yeah this is this is interesting interesting stuff good stuff well he doesn't really want a two-state solution <laughs> i don't want a two-state solution yeah. that's a that's that's a terror state to destroy it i of course believe this whole hey that should be your thumbnail <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> However, having said that, this man has written in his book, A War in Israel. Wait, wait, his... wait, I missed this part. We're talking about something serious here. Let's do serious. I don't want you, a two-state solution. That's a, that's, that's a terror state to destroy Israel. I personally course believe not. this whole question should be left to the Palestinians of what kind of solution they want. How... Look at that grandstanding. Like it's... <laughs> Give the, look, think about what he's saying here. Give the Palestinians a big army and let them do what they want. Wait, what? <laughs> we know what they want. We know exactly what they want. Yeah. Well. According to polls published by Palestinian research sources over the years, over and over again, the majority of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank say that they are not satisfied with a two-state solution. If they can obtain it, they would want to fight uh, until all of it belongs to them. All of it belongs to them. Mm -hmm. And only a very tiny minority of them thinks a future state where they live together with the Jews is possible. So uh to summarize that what most palestinians in the in the palestinian territories would want is to take all of it over and to get rid of the jews kick them out or eradicate them why in the world would you expect the other side to support that i apologize for my grinning but someone posted that muhammad must have taken advantage of the discount code <laughs> 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 However, having said that, this man has written in his book, A War in Israel, that is uh, the settlement. I didn't write a book called The War in Israel. Uh, so, uh, it's called The, uh, the Israel Warrior. Or something oh, thank like you. That, right? Thanks for plugging oh, it. Oh, fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I find this is really, I find this so funny. And Rabbi, fantastic, fantastic. Meanwhile, Rabbi Rabbi Shmule's book uh, skyrockets to number one on Amazon. Thank you, <laughs> Muhammad Hijab. Right, so, uh, it's called the uh, the Israel Warrior. Or something Thank like that, you. Right? Thanks for plugging. Oh, fantastic. I appreciate fantastic. that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. In that book, you write <laughs> Thank you, Muhammad. that the God issue of you. excuse me the issue of settlements that me and you both condemn peers. I do. Yeah. 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 We do. He doesn't condemn it because he sees a, an ancient uh, biblical reason to be in that whole land. Oh, I think That's, Israel, I think me. Arabs in Israel uh -huh. should be able to live wherever they want. Uh -huh. I want Arabs to live in Jerusalem. I don't believe in Keep Arab. Talking. I am so proud that Israel Keep has 1.8 million Arab Muslim citizens. Why does he say keep talking? And then he's just, he, he says keep talking. If you want him to keep talking, just shut up so he can talk. Then. <laughs> Be nice. Well, protected by the idea. Yeah, but he calls the idea a terrorist. Yeah, but, they are defending Muslims. What you should be less proud of is the rapid expansion of these settlements on the West Bank. It has been incredibly do you condemn it's that? It's been, in my view, illegal. It's been declared illegal. Illegal it by shouldn't have happened. Well, Pierce, UN, let me, let me human you. rights. There are many things I'll defend. Let me answer. Let me there are many things I'll defend Israel. This is so funny because before we even get to the settlements, Mohammed Dijab has uh, early expressed his problem again with um, the Palestinian refugee crisis, which uh, is often brought up when, when, when we talk about um, you know, a solution to the conflict. He thinks that uh, all of the the refugees that are recognized as refugees living in the Palestinian territories and anywhere else should be, uh, in the event, uh, allowed to return, return to uh, their homes, including in uh, the the occupied Palestinian territories and and Israel. So. Um, <laughs> in short, he wants to delegitimize any expansion that happened as a result of the many wars and conflicts. And he wants, uh, he thinks the Palestinian refugees living uh, everywhere else should have the right to return to Israel and reclaim those lands that Israel holds now and should call it their home. Why in the world would you allow that? Why in the world would Israel allow that? Those expansions happened because of Arab aggressions against Israel. The refugee problem happened because of Arab expansions against Israel. Why would Israel now allow, uh, you know, refugees, so-called refugees, to come back? And it's just amazing. I mean, you're talking about a religion that sort of uh, took over Arabia. And notice, I mean, Muhammad moves to Medina, which welcomes him, welcomes him in. 
and eventually he's ex he's expelling people and and uh, murdering uh, murdering people and so on completely taking over they take over arabia they expand westward move all the way across uh, northern africa up into europe they go eastward they go all the way out to uh, india and china and so on and then one little tiny piece of land the size of like half a postage stamp on a map that's like you, nope can't 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 have uh, can't have jews controlling that I, Israel removed all of the settlements from Gaza in 2005. Huge move, very unpopular move with uh, you know people who didn't really want to give that concession. But there, there was a huge move. There were so many moments in the recent history where the Palestinian side, the Palestinian Authority, could have gone for a uh, a two-state solution and established peace, accepting what they want. But no. They just keep wanting more and more and more and more and more. And the more they delay this, the more settlements and other things will continue. It, it, this has been the problem the entire time. Why didn't the Arab side accept what they had at the very beginning? The, the land didn't belong to them. They didn't own the land. They didn't rule the land. They were not rulers of the land. They were living in a land that was imperial Ottoman land that was then taken by Great Britain, which they then used to give to uh, the, 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 the Jews, where they could build a proper home for a, for a Jewish population together with the Arabs. The Arabs didn't like it. It was split in two. The Arabs didn't like it. They attacked. Israel still left land for them. They didn't like it. They wanted uh, all of it back. There was another attack. Israel took all of it, occupied it, took it all, could do with it whatever they wanted. If they wanted to do a genocide, if they wanted to do ethnic cleansing, if they wanted to get rid of all of the Arabs, all the Palestinians, they could have done it. They didn't do it. Eventually, after decades, they they decided to actually give Gaza and the West Bank self-governance. They didn't like that either. What exactly do you expect? What do you give these people? An army, an army. <laughs> Give them a big army with tanks. Yeah. Tanks. They need tanks. Yeah. That is indefensible. Let me answer. Absolutely. Let me answer. Absolutely. If you go to places in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, why are you calling like, Judea Samaria? Like, like the, because Why's those, those are the biblical land. Why are you calling it? Why are you calling it? It's not their land. Now, 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 History. It was always your dance, Samaria. Uh, the West wasn't. Bank is the West Canaan. Bank of Canaan. a river. To the Bible. We don't call Canaan it California the, Bible. the West Bank of the Canaan? Mississippi River. Now, let me go don't back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Call it Canaan. If you go to the Barkan Industrial Park in Judea, and Pierce Samaria. is being terrible here. I have to say he's yeah, being he's, he's horrible and he's he's biased in his responses. Maybe because he can't uh, he 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 can't control Muhammad Tijam, so he tries to control uh, the rabbi whenever he can. But he is very much knocking down on uh the rabbi whenever he tries to speak but not doing the yeah. same thing with Muhammad hijab quite yeah often. and then and then hijab moans and wails oh it's two on one it's two on one you're both yeah, attacking yeah. me i'm a victim <laughs> cry baby man samira you will see i've met the palestinians i've interviewed them they are paid t t 20 times the salary working for people you call settlers they want them there it brings civilization. It's lot, only jihadis who don't I, I want to. It's back. only jihadis, and that's why that's you're not saying, true. Yes, it is true. That's not true. I've, I've interviewed I them know myself. I many, many Palestinians. Can I just make a, can who I, definitely look, do not want to. You, you, you know, excuse me. The, 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 you know Palestinians who want to live under Mahmoud Abbas with no democracy. Let me come to Mahmoud. Afraid to criticize Mahmoud in jail. This is true, by the way. Mahmoud Abbas, the current Fatah government in the West Bank, is extremely unpopular. Most Palestinians hate. The Palestinian Authority, they don't like them. They are uh, they accuse them of corruption. The corruption is very uh, evident. They do things such as uh, kidnapping their uh, rivals, their opponents, or suspected opponents, and torturing them, putting them away with no charge. Stuff that they accuse Israel of doing. The Palestinian Authority in the West Bank does all the time. David, do you have to go at some point? I just realized we are three hours in. <laughs> Yeah, I can make it work. I do have uh, I do have a, uh, a a kid who's up, but it's a it's a weekend, so it's a weekend. Okay, okay. Muhammad. Shmoli, yes, my friend Muhammad. Go ahead, Muhammad. Please, please, let's please. Be a please. Conversation, You're wearing my favorite blue color. Of course, I'll let you. Fantastic. Speak. Thank for, you. for that reason, yes, brilliant. Thank you. There we have it. Pieces. Well, Pieces uh, in the Middle East. The blue. My mother loved that color. And she like, I thought it was. I thought it would have been because of Israel, because you. Oh, that's right. You wore the Israeli colors today. Is it? Can we shake hands? No, please. I don't want to. Look, they're friends. 
Yeah. Say the rabbi thought they were about to be friends and then hijab ruined it. I thought we were about to have peace in the Middle East and then hijab ruined it. He, he didn't shake your hands either, right? When you debated him? No. Yeah. You 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 reached out and I stuck he, my hand out and then he he you can I'll shake hand. I'd be happy to take a secret second wife, even if she's only only seven or something, but no, shaking hands with the kufar. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a perfectly functioning moral compass. Perfectly yeah. functioning. Moral. After what you said today about me, I can't shake your hand. But After what you said, about what did he say about him? Did what? he say about? Did he say what you said about me? Yeah. What? Uh, they, they, wait, wait. Hijab went after his 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 daughter, his He's, son. He and said, then he says what you said about me. He said he made sexual suggestions about him and his daughter together, two on one. He talked about his son uh, vibrating with rockets while he sells vibrators to uh, to the to the public. He talked about lubricants. He talked about dildos and this and that. And now he's like, after what you said about me today, I can't shake. Him. What a narcissist! <laughs> <sighs> About my sex life, and no, I'm no, shaking no, no, your no. head. You stop, stop, stop. I just want to say. You won't shake my head. You, know, you, know, you won't shake my head. Let him speak. Let him speak. That's really sad. Know, I guess it will be no. You know, you know I, what he said there is a little bit telling because you know the, the blue colors and Israel and that kind of stuff. He defended Dershowitz, which was Jeffrey Epstein's uh, lawyer, for that very reason, because he's a supporter of Israel. I defended I, Dershowitz. I don't know. Did you go Dershowitz and I fought over him going to you Qatar. Defended. You don't know anything. You wrote on the observer. You're, you're, you wrote on the observer. you're abysmal you wrote ignorance. Irrelevant, it's shocking. Irrelevant. You're, you're you wrote wrote so, okay, he, he makes another claim that is completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> and also a completely off-topic personal remark once again. It's had a huge fight over him defending Qatar. Who Did you go gives, to the island? Who no, gives, come on, guys. Did I Get go back to the topic. Did you go to the island? island? Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad. What about, what about really Dershowitz? What about Dershowitz? Mm. He actually asked him, did you go to his island? Did you go to Epstein's island? I don't know why this is a problem. Um, I mean, what? what um, seriously. I'm ser Seriously, I do not know why Islamists like Muhammad Hijab or Daniel Kikichu or others would blame Jeffrey Epstein. I do not know why they would have a problem with Jeffrey Epstein. Why? No. No, why is that's, Jeffrey that's Epstein like their, so bad? That's like their goal. That's like their goal in yeah. life. What Jeffrey Epstein did is uh, to have a have a place where he hires young girls that are underage. Well, yeah, you need to clarify what you mean by young because yeah. uh, their only objection, their, the only objection Daniel Hakikachu would have to uh, to Jeffrey Epstein is that he's into older women. Namely, thirteen-year-olds. <laughs> who, 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 for 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 Daniel, that's that's a grandmother. Yeah, I believe. Um... Guys, if you guys, if you think we're making this up, Daniel, Daniel, believe he he was asked five doesn't matter four, uh, even an eleven-month-old. If you had parental permission, an eleven-month-old baby, you could have sex with. Okay, I've just confirmed Daniel. it. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's youngest victim, youngest documented victim, was fourteen years old. Grandma. 14. Grandma. 14 years old. Old lady. 14 years old. So old what Jeff hag. did is he had he had teenagers, young, young girls. Uh, they would come to him. He would employ them. He would give them money and say, Hey, can you do this and this for me? And he would slowly ease them in and uh start and would start using them for you know sexual favors, for sexual massages and things like these. Uh would then say, Hey, how about I give you more money and you bring some of your friends over and you know we can we can have them work for with us too and uh he would just give them a lot of money and would make them work for him and and very few of the girls actually had sex uh and and only um only some of them with anyone why other are you than defending him. jeffrey epstein so like so here's every sick evil person <laughs> <laughs> so so why exactly do these islamists have a problem with jeffrey epstein when in their ideal world it is completely fine to have a bunch of little girls, a bunch of little children, take them as sex slaves and rape them. We have just heard it from Daniel Kikichu. He says at any age, you can take them and you can rape them. You can take them as sex slaves. So you why is Jeffrey Epstein a problem? You don't get it because you don't go to the 14-year-old. You go to her granddaughter. Yeah, That's who you want as your wife. That's it. According to Daniel Hakikachu. That's it. Jeffrey Epstein was an idiot. He took old women. <laughs>
Wait, 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 wait
How would you like it to be resolved, this crisis? Okay, fantastic. Okay? Okay, look. Yeah, let's look at history. River right? to the sea. That's how you want it, right? Oh, Israel. Come Let on. him answer. Oh, well, Don't well, answer for him. Saying. Honestly, you, you'd be surprised to, to know this. And people talk about, you, you said this, I have to correct you. I looked at the Hamas charter, Hamas himself, yeah? Mm. In, in Article 16, even they say you can have, in Article 31, they say that you can have peace between, you, they can have a shared land between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They even say that. that I, I think the most... Radical elements, everybody you want. Uh, the, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. In Article 31, they say that you can have peace between, they can have a shared land between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They even say that. that I, I think the most. He's talking about the current Hamas charter, Article 31, right? Isn't that the. It, maybe, my, maybe my memory is foggy, but isn't that, uh, isn't that the, where it's a, a sort of temporary two state solution? I, I know I know about that, but he's talking about something else here. He's talking about uh, he's talking about a, a land that is shared between. So uh, th there is one issue where in the Hamas Charter 2017, Hamas says um, they say that they could preliminarily agree to a um, a state along the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital, but they will never give up their aim of taking all of historic Palestine. So um, they would only accept a temporary uh, state and would then ev uh, eventually um, aim to own all of it. But now he's talking about something else here. He's saying that there is... Wait a minute, let's, let's hear this again. I looked at the Hamas charter, Hamas himself, yeah? Mm. In, in Article 16, even they say you can have... In Article 31, they say that you can have peace between... You, they can have a shared land between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They even say that. All right. I don't remember any such thing. Let's see. Is he talking about the Hamas Charter of 1988 or talking about the Hamas Charter of 2017? He said Article 31, right? This is the old one. Article 31. 31. <clears throat> The Islamic resistance movement is a humanist humanistic nice. movement. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> it takes care of human rights and is guided yep. by Islamic tolerance when dealing uh -huh. with followers. Islamic it tolerance. It does not antagonize anyone of them except it is antagonized by it or, it st or stands in its way to hamper its moves and waste its efforts. Under the wing of Islam. This there is what go. he's talking about. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. It is possible for the followers of the three religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, to coexist in peace and quiet with each other. Peace and quiet would not be possible except under the wing of Islam. So Islam that has to be under control. History. Islam has to be has to be in control, right? Yeah, but he, the issue is they are not saying here that, they, that it could be a shared land in Palestine. They say under Islam, Christianity and is, uh, Islam and Judaism could coexist in peace. First of so all, that is, that is a first correction, but let's read through. Let's see if it says anything like that. It is the duty of the followers of the other religion to stop disputing the sovereignty of Islam in this, in this region. It's our duty to stop disputing the sovereignty of Islam. Because the day these followers should take over, there will be nothing but carnage, displacement, and terror. Very, very ironic. Very ironic. Every one of them is at variance with this, with his fellow religionists, not to speak about followers of other religionists. Past and present history are full of examples. Okay, let's hear again what Mohammed Hijab just claimed. They say that you can, in Article 16, <clears throat> even they say you can have, in Article 31, they say that you can have peace between, Why you they have a shared land between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They even say that. that I, I think the most. All right. Shared lands between Christians, Muslims, and Jews, where Muslims uh, are in charge, and we do what we're told. In this, in this uh, charter, you mean? Now let's go. Let's go in this charter to Article Seven, and let's read Article Seven once more. It's a little bit of a long, long uh, article. Let's just start from here. Moreover, if the links have been distant from each other. And if obstacles placed by those who are the lackeys of Zionism in the way of the fighters obstructed the continuation of the struggle, the Islamic resistance movement, Hamas, aspires to the realization of Allah's promise, no matter how long that should take. The Prophet, Allah bless him and grant him salvation, has said, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews when the Jew will behind, hide behind stones and trees, the stones and trees will say, O Muslim, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Only the Gargit tree would not do that because it is one of the trees of the Jews. 
By the way, notice all notice always the uh, the prophet Allah bless him and grant him salvation. It's like they, they still think that their prophet's eternal well being uh, rests somehow on their supplications. Please, please, Allah grant him salvation. Yeah, that yeah. would make. And by the way, note if, if, if psychologically how this all ties together, it's hey if. If Muhammad, if Muhammad himself is a little in doubt, right? Like even him, even him, we have to constantly uh, be seeking his his well being, and he's the best of the best. What hope is there for the rest of us? It's always, it's always an an encouragement to jihad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Prophet Muhammad, he himself, he told us, he promised us, he made a last promise. He said, "You will fight the Jews and you will kill them." until they hide behind stones and trees and even stones and trees will say come there is a jew behind me oh muslim come and kill the jew except for one tree the karga tree because that tree is the tree of the jews but we know that we will get behind that too and we will kill the jews this is the hamas charter yeah they, they talk they talk about this in a second hijab starts going it's an eschatological hadith an eschatological hadith and this is not this is not all by the way uh if you want to go through the charter here it even goes into some insanities insane conspiracy theories like um oh yeah elders of <laughs> it actually mentions the protocols of the elders of zion which there is a which is a forgery an insane forgery and conspiracy theory according to which the jews want to according to which the jews are controlled of the world they want to take it all over and they want to cre create a great israel a great zionist land in the entire region and they, they are behind all of the things in the world this is hamas and their charter and we are supposed to trust this fantastic 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 reference to Muhammad Hijab. Radical elements, everybody you want. Uh, the jihadis, these one, that one. No one actually wants the extermination of Jewish people. That's a, that's a actually, lie. that's not no, true. No, no, that's not true. true. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah, no one wants that. The Hamas charge, I just read it. It says uh, we aspire to this no matter how long it takes. <laughs> Was it? Weren't there people chanting uh, "Gas the Jews, Gas yes, the Jews" yes. in Australia and so on? Yes. No, but no, no one wants it. No one wants it. No one wants it. We all, we all just want, we all just want Palestinians to have a big, huge army and tanks for peace. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we're just saying it will happen. We're just saying yes, we will kill the Jews in the future. You know, it yeah, we're not happen. saying we want to. We're just saying we're going. We're going to. Yeah, we I, I don't want to kill the Jews. It's just, it's going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, wait, now let me, let me oh, speak. Wait, I'll tell you who. The Hamas Charter, you know, let me speak. The Hamas Charter says that behind every single tree and stone that's where a Jew... That's hadith of Prophet. Now you're saying that the Muslim... No, that's hadith. That wouldn't even be my yeah, answer. Yeah, it says hadith. that every Jew has to be murdered. How can you possibly deny that? That's hadith. You know, you have... You have what's the hadith say? The hadith says in the end of... It's an eschatological hadith. Yes, but... It's an eschatological hadith, which says that on the end of times, there'll be a war and there'll be trees and stones that say behind me is a... Is a Jew uh, killing? So Muhammad is saying that the Jews. Yeah, yeah. This is a hadith which has been missing. What does it mean? So by the way, it, mean? it means that it's an eschatological. It's not an imperative. What does it mean? It's not an imperative. Are, are you Muhammad, obligated to kill a Jew? According to the hadith, no. you're not. Okay, okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Why do you pick and choose? You can pick and choose. No, excuse me. Let me ask you a question. Yes, let me ask you a question. Is this a theological question? I'm answering you. This hadith is called an eschatological. You know this because you're a theologian. It's an eschatological hadith. It's not talking about. It's not literal. It's not imper It's not like uh, First Samuel. Oh, it's literal. This is completely besides the point. This yeah. is a typical, typical uh, um, differentiation. Mm -hmm. Saying uh, it, it is eschatological. It's, it's talking about the end time. No, no, it's talking about the end time. It's it's not about eradicating the Jews. No, no, no. It's about the end time. Yeah. It doesn't matter what time it is talking about. The hadith says and promises and prophesies that the Muslims will fight and kill the Jews. That's yeah, it. and so the only uh, what what hijab is pointing out here that it's saying it's not an imperative, meaning. It's not an order to you, particular Muslim at this time, to necessarily run out and start killing Jews. It does mean it is a future goal, and you don't yes. get your virgins until you actually do this. And so it's always a goal. It's a goal. You, you might say, hey, you know, we're not doing that right now, but it is something you're aiming towards. Yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Where it says, go and kill the men, women, children, donkeys, and oxen, mm. which, by the way, Netanyahu quoted. No, Amalek. that's not true. He quoted the Malik. That's, 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 he said that's you can kill them one minute. It's not like that. See, this, this, me, is, this, is, this, is, this is not what Netanyahu actually said. Netanyahu uh, did quote Amalek. He said, uh, he, he spoke to the people and said, remember what Amalek did, did to you. 
and he referenced several other things, uh, oppression and this and that, and uh, fighting the enemy. He did not say we should follow the directions uh, as laid out in that case of going and destroying Amalek altogether. That's not what he said. He did say, though, we could, you could consider that problematic. And maybe, I, I don't know, from my perspective, uh, it's probably not something that Netanyahu should have brought up. Lots of other people agreed as well. But uh, to, to, to appeal to the emotions of the Jews by saying, remember what Amalek did to you. However, again, he did not make any implication or uh, otherwise indicate that we should now take the order as it was laid out in the Bible. Uh, in in, re, in reference to Amalek and you know kill and eradicate anybody everybody, we went through this right, David. We went yeah, through we the did whole an entire live Amalek. stream. We went we went through the entire uh, we we read the entire chapter <laughs> and uh, and went through uh, the relevant portions of uh, of the rest of the uh, of the rest of first and second Samuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can you can watch that all there. We went through it extensively. Let me, liable of saying let, the Jews want to, to I get a word in here? But, but Pierce, 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 no, Pierce, 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 I'm going to put a point to Marvin. I tell you who wants the absolute annihilation of every Jew they can get yeah. their hands on. All the Hamas terrorists who crossed the border oh, on October talking? the 7th yeah. who gleefully okay, fine, fine. recorded yeah. it, fine. boasted See, about no, it, I'm and, fine, and fine. the Hamas official, yeah. wait a minute, yeah. Yeah. and the Hamas official spokesman who yeah. only last week said they want to do it again and again yeah. and again. Yeah. Yeah, that, if you don't that, think no, 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 that, that, Hamas is, here, here we are wedded no, 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 as an organization no, no, no. See, to the annihilation no, 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 of Jewish no. people, you are living no, 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 in their charter. In their charter it says that they will murder and said in their action one day. No, no, that's so that's what right, want to that I agree with. Hold on. Uh, let me tell you why I agree or disagree. Both the IDF and Hamas on paper say they don't want the annihilation of Muslims and Jews. No, yeah. no. Let, let me, what are you talking about, man? <sighs> yes, you're right. The IDF has never expressed that they want all uh, Palestinians or, or Muslims killed. But yes, we all know that Hamas in their charter in their actions, in their speeches over the years, again and again, expressed their need and their desire to exterminate the Jews, to yeah, kill the, all Jews. And the only way around it is if you're just subjugated and you acknowledge, hey, these guys, Muslims are superior to us and they're in charge. Yeah. yeah then, yeah. then they might give you a pass if they feel like it. Okay, we have 20 more minutes left, uh, David, but I feel like if we're going to go through that, we're going to be sit here for another two hours. So, uh, maybe yeah, there's not, there's not a. I mean, it's. It, you know, there it's it's more yelling and stuff. So, I, I want to see one part though, just at the end. I want to see the conclusion because I find it quite funny. <laughs> uh, we were at forty-seven. I might review that. Look again. at his job with all his notes and pictures. Yeah. Let yourselves down. I gave you. <laughs> and no you don't get to go all over. Doesn't matter again. what your name is. Look, I found that a quite. A well, okay, okay, let's see. Absolutely not acceptable. So peace is a, uh, justice requirement for peace. Okay. By the way, by the way it's no, smoothly, that's a, no, not no, 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 Hour. I've got to be honest with you. Doesn't matter. I thought both of you. Oh, you hear that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. I gave you a great opportunity here. Uh, we gave you to a try and as reach. Well, Come on. Well, fine. You can say what you like we about give me. You I an, don't care. We gave you an audience. You gave I don't us an care. audience. It's fine. But it's not just about the audience. It's about a big audience, which we're getting for all these shows. About a big audience seeing people but, try but to come be together. Don't be sanctimonious, though. Nobody here has seen you try. <laughs> don't try be sanctimonious. I would no, you know, Pierce, Pierce, to me. Pierce. Pierce. <laughs> I, Pierce is making the point here. We give uh, I give you an opportunity to have a serious debate about this, and Mohammed Hijab is immediately like, "Oh, we also you give you an lose. opportunity. We give you audience, and also to lose." Yes, yes, I have my <laughs> extremely mature followers who love to come here to hear me talk about dildos and lube. Ha -ha! So, so I'm doing you a favor, Pierce. Yeah. What can I do? Pierce, with all due respect, since try you know, harder. I, 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 I believe, apartheid. you know, I believe, I believe, do you agree I, believe with I believe in control. Try harder. Do you agree as Nelson apartheid? Mandela Pierce, did when he came out. Of, Nelson Mandela could have gone down this road when he came out of prison after 27 years. And, and they called him a terrorist then. They called him a terrorist. No, wait then. a minute. Yeah, he, could have, did. he could have come out of prison and he could have taken the path of vengeance. He did. Instead, he was violent. Instead, what are you talking about? he took the path of peace. He was violent. He took the path of reconciliation. What are you talking about? When he came out of prison, he took the path of peace. He was Pierce, violent. Pierce, right? And you called him a terrorist. Respect, the respect, respect. Yeah, I, I take... I don't know the history of Nelson Mandela. He was peaceful after he came out, but uh, I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I, I do remember some of their reconciliation meetings where you get up and people would confess to what they've done and people would forgive each other and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. But, I, yeah, I don't know enough about it. <laughs> and I will think about what you said. And Mandela was but, I, but, I, but I will tell you. He was against but I, but I, but I will, yes. But I will tell you. I will tell you. If you bring two people on to a debate and you're saying that we let you Don't give him lessons. Don't give him lessons. Don't give him lessons. Don't give him lessons. You bring people. He's very successful man. He's very successful man. And you allow one, one, one to bring up stuff that is so... Just embarrassing, like sex people's sex lives. Well, you probably books no, on I sex. no, I did not. No, I did not. I did. No, right. sex? no. Oh, I'm proud of my books on yeah? sex, but All this right. is a debate about yeah, the Middle East. I don't care about your sex lives, either of you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> to be really interested That's in it. my mind. Uh, for me, we'll whatever you're up to. We'll talk later. Keep it uncensored. Oh, Good night. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. Uh, it is weird. Pierce going, oh, you let everyone down. This isn't what I wanted. Like, wait, what? One like, I, like, like, okay, you got, you've got Muhammad Hijab. Everyone with a with with two brain cells knows exactly what Muhammad is. Muhammad Hijab is going to do in this situation, and everyone who is familiar with Rabbi Shmulek knows he's not going to back down from Muhammad Hijab, and so he's going to he's going to respond in kind to the the you know to the to the shouting and so on. So, how do you not have an idea that this is going to happen, Pierce? That's the uh, that's the question. Plus, Pierce was also terrible at moderating this. I mean, we have to, it has to be said. Uh, he was terrible at moderating this. He was terrible at controlling the room. He lost the room as soon as they started. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, does he really not like it, though? I mean, you get, you get tons of views. I mean, you could have anticipated it. You could have taken steps and just said, hey, we're going to go two minutes back and forth. Um, mics are going to be cut. Uh, if, you, if you interrupt the other person, then... Um, you know, then I'm going to kick you out or something like that. So you could do it, but yeah, I I'm not convinced that this wasn't the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, was a very interesting conversation was actually much more horrible than, uh, than I remember it. The first time I just skimmed through it and I just went to the funny moments and I thought, Hey, this is actually very, very enjoyable. But, uh, looking at it later on, it's, I, my, I have a giant headache after listening to this. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have a. I we have should a, we should just do every show exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. Like every live stream, we should just we should just. No, I mean hijab will pick anything and then start start complaining about it yeah. to derail to derail a conversation. We just we should just do like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me quickly go through a few things here. Sankai said, uh, Abu Huraira said, Muslims would kill Jews until they hide behind a stone or a tree, which would say, oh, Muslim servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me. He's got his daughter's vibrator in his pocket. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> got you again. He got you. Shut up. Uh, Captain Golden Shower said, <laughs> with a very nice profile picture here, listen here, apostate prophet, I will golden shower you. I will golden, golden shower, shower you. Almost. Golden, golden shower, shower your dog. house. I will yes. golden shower your dog. And then, <laughs> and only then will you see the true power of Islam. Here that said, Bukhari 2, 3, that they will not come until the Muslims fight the leather straps. The leather strap will hide behind each anus and will say, oh, Muslims, there is an anus behind me. We are proud of that. Thank yeah, you. Well, yeah, just, just so everyone knows, when uh, if, if people are wondering what in the world's going on there, there's a, there's, a, <laughs> there's a famous hadith that we're making famous where Muhammad said the eyes are the leather strap of the anus. And uh, we all find it hilarious. And so people keep bringing it up. That's true. That is true. Raisin Bread said, Kenneth Owens invited anti-Israel person Norman Finkelstein in her podcast. The comment section of the video on YouTube has comments from Muslims who are very happy that Candy invited him. Well, no, notice, can... notice it's always the same. It's always the same method. It's always the same method. Do what we want. We heap praise on you. Oh, you're so great. It's so great. And the moment you dis the moment they disagree with you, they, they they will turn on you. Look at Jordan Peterson, right? As long as he was, hey, let's have Muhammad a job on there. Yeah, you're so great. We really love you. You're one of you're you're such a good person, Jordan. The moment the moment he said uh, Hamas needs to be destroyed, he became like one of their top enemies. Yeah, uh, Candace Candace Owens is um, is a grifter. A very unreliable person. What are you talking about, Candace? What are you talking terrible, about, Candace? Terrible source of information. Uh, Norman Finkelstein is a revisionist uh, historian on... Uh, I don't even know if he's a historian, actually. He's a, a revisionist scholar on the whole Israel uh, conflict. And 
as long as I have been aware of the Israel-Palestine conflict, when I was a child, I heard Norm Finkelstein over and over again, cited by people who want to criticize Israel and want to say free Palestine, the only person that they ever go to. And yeah, sure, of course, Kenneth Owens would invite him and have, a, <laughs> and have him validate the pro-Palestine, anti-Israel, anti-Zionist views. Uh, yeah, not surprised to you. Not surprised. Cliff Wilson said, yes, get Shmuley and Brown. Also, you're stuttering because she was nine years old. The eyes of the luster of the anus. The sun does set in a muddy pool, and we are proud of that. This is very good, man. This is very, very good. Powerful. Here we can see that this is a longtime viewer. Gets everything right. Uh, Joshua Wooden said, helps woman. Then why in the lazy wrestling, last wrestling PPV in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, everyone dressed as they always do, except the female wrestlers. The only skin was their face. Modesty is good, but not forced. That's true. That's true. Good point. Except in a concert in, uh, uh, during a concert in, in Riyadh recently, there was Iggy Azela. She gave a concert and she was shaking her booty not to be confused with shaky booty uh there was a very interesting concert joshua wooden said rabbi shmuley knows nothing about islam add that to your soundboard mojab said genocide then i said never genocide this was a serious topic but turned into a committee platform and mo chest thumping yeah i would like to talk to rabbi shmuley more about islam just to but he might also just want to be you know diplomatic here Joshua Wooded said that the metaphysical matter man say anything about most boom boom room. Eventually, David Wood play Aladawa and AP play Jordan Peterson. Also, anyone should play Daniel and use Daniel quotes. That's good. That's good. It's it's okay for audio, but it it's kind of hard for it would be kind of hard for me to pay, play Aladawa or for AP to play Jordan Peterson because we don't kind of look like them. I do. I look exactly like Jordan Peterson. You look like his twin brother. Yeah. <laughs> Ayatollah Khamenei said Mimi Hijab just succeeded in winning APA larger audience due to talking to Shmuley. Hilarious defeat for Hijab. <laughs> uh, Fozia said Israel dealing with Gaza, Hamas, and brilliant apologists, influencer dealing with the likes of Hijab. Is that a promotional response? Proportional response? Yes, it is. It is. It is absolutely. It's not 100 to 1 either, so it's good. It's good. Fly said Mohammed Hijab speaks Facebook news and his whole shtick is being loud and insufferable. It's impossible to have a rational conversation with him. Indeed, 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 indeed. Indeed. Cheryl R said Hamas is responsible for a vast majority of Palestinians killed since they wouldn't let Palestinians flee, shooting anyone who dared try, brainwash the rest with propaganda like poor far four. It's true. We have um we have confirmed cases of Hamas shooting civilians who are trying to escape from Hamas controlled northern Gazan territories. But yeah, it's all it's all Israel's fault. Arab Ing said IDF's ratio of militants to civilians is considered the best. In 2014 war, 2,200 Palestinians died, but 1,300 identified as militants by the IIC, IICC, I see, from various funerals, announcements, photos, etc. Solid, solid. One of the things that are a problem to me still are um, the current war. Hamas says that there are that ten thousand or eleven thousand Palestinians died, but the thing is, nobody actually knows how many people died. It is just Hamas health ministry saying this, and the entire world is just relying on that right now. We don't actually know how many people died. And considering that they, um, the day that whole uh, hospital parking lot explosion happened, uh, Hamas came out and said they bombed the hospital. 500 people died. They said this within, within minutes. And it turns out it wasn't even a hospital explosion. It was, it was a parking lot explosion, not caused by an Israeli airstrike. And we don't have names at all. Nobody knows how many people actually died during this whole war. We are just blindly trusting Hamas here. Well, 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 who else are you going to trust? Yeah. If you can't trust Hamas, who can you trust? You're going to trust the sex shop. <laughs> Michelle B said, your video st says it started 10 hours ago. You two are the GOAT. Thanks, guys, for this review. It did start 10 hours ago. Mm -hmm. We've been going 10 hours straight, like yeah. a boss. 
Aviv Gur said, thank you. And by the way, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Aviv Gur. Uh, Thundering YG said, was Jeffrey Epstein a Muslim debates coming soon? Inshallah, he was. Destiny had some very funny words about that. Uh, <laughs> channel for you said, David Singh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air against Hijab. Yeah. I don't know why, why how, and when. What? This is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. I don't, yeah, I don't know. The dehydrated past that you guys are familiar with, Yaron Avraham. He has an extremely rare, has an extremely rare and strange case. He's a Muslim Gazan that converted to Judaism. Not sure. Maybe Yaron Avraham. I know of quite some Israeli Arabs who are great defenders of Israel. Uh, I haven't heard of this person. Interesting. I'll check it out. Grant Moff Tarkin's an apologist used to say Islam wasn't evil back in the day. Now they say we're evil, but so are you. And if you are not, you should be. Yeah, that's the new tactic. New pretty tactic. pretty much uh, an exact description, yeah. Revol Arida said the Australian Socialist Party is currently in attendance at the pro-Palestinian in Melbourne, Australia, signing up people. It is interesting what, what, what groups... Uh, <laughs> What groups that totally contradict each other nevertheless uh, find common ground right now? Yeah, yeah. Hating the Jews. Farfour said, This wouldn't have happened if they had a pen pal. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. Jordan Peterson, if he came into this conversation, he would have solved it immediately. Mm -hmm. Pen pal. Pen pal, eh? How about you just, you know, become pen pals? Yeah. How about Sunnies, you just write each other? Sunnies, get a Shia pen pal, eh? How about no? <laughs> so then he said, whenever I close my leather strap, I see hijab with his shirt off. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, now That's you've good. got a now you've got an edited an edited picture. Alhamdulillah. Whoa. Harry Catacletis uh, made a super chat of three hundred dollars. Uh, hey, good luck, Harry, because that goes right to AP. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so who oh, is that is that somebody you know? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, okay. So, Doctor David Wood, God bless you and your amazing family. Readers and inspiration. I hope this helps. I will forward this to David. No. <laughs> but it. But I would not normally. But this is specifically. This is specifically saying hope this helps. I reject it. He sent it to you. He sent a message to me. We can find. He it sent out. money to you. He sent a message to me. But he said hope this helps. So it looks like this is supposed to be monetary help to you he hopes it helps you ap have these discussions with me harry you need to clarify what's happening here otherwise i will have to fight about this with david wood and we might get i don't know violent i, I will say. burn that money before i take it from you ap <laughs> <laughs> harry please clarify it uh once you clarify it i will act accordingly <laughs> But thank you so much. I very, very much appreciate it in any case, no matter where it goes. Um, strap on pleasure machine said hijab W as always you see. See, what's weird is you get new viewers and they don't understand all these ongoing jokes. So this is about <laughs> Daniel Hakikachu. We've talked about him and he has this long thing about a, a strap on pleasure machine because this is the mentality of the, the guys we interact with regularly. Yeah. Because of the, the, the Dawa people and the weird things they say, all of the new people who will, who come here are like, what in the world is going on in this channel? Yeah. Where, where, where did I land here? <laughs> everything uh, everything is about leather straps of the anus and strap on pleasure machines. And <laughs> what? I click on here. They're talking about vibrators. Like, guys, this, this is what they make us talk about. Oh, well. Maybe that's their strategy. They're trying to discredit the critics of Islam by making us talk about these things. That's the that's very smart, actually. Honestly, um, Robert Mitchell said hijab arguing with a rabbi on Pierce Morgan's show. I can't believe my leather strap. Yeah. AKS said normal Finkelstein said ten seven warned every fiber of his being. This is the champion intellectual. Did he really say that? I'd have to see that. Did he really say that? I want to. I, I want to. Fair you pitch. don't need to look it up now. We can look it up later. That might be something worth discussing. If he did say Jeez, stuff like that, he, if he really said that, that that. Yeah, uh, whatever. Okay, I'll check. I'll check it later. 
I'll check it later. So far, I'm still waiting for Harry to clarify. But yes, I think we're done. We're done. We're done. No more super chats. I can't read more super chats. Dehydrated Pi said, "That's fine, guys. Harry can give the money to me." Okay. Uh, <laughs> My TV said Hamas killed Arab Muslims in Israel because they live in Kafir land. Yes, yes. Amir said, "God bless Jesus is King." He made me say it. See, uh, like Abi Mill said, the video of Hamas killing Palestinians. Um, look for it i can't post all of it I, I i retweeted it on my twitter abundantly um but yeah okay you, okay, you, don't wanna, go. you wouldn't want to play something like that on youtube anyway yeah yeah wouldn't want to do that uh saint constantine great said yo peter which y'all should set up a stream labs donation portal so you don't have to give a 30 percent cut to cringe tube god bless you both uh and then he made the signal which i don't know what it, can, what it is tube. It, for, at least i can't know what it is about uh it's a signal between no yeah chats. yeah you guys keep i don't i don't know what it is I don't know. Keep letting in AP, the atheist. On, I don't know. Uh, I didn't even see it. Okay. I didn't even see it. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. We will be live tomorrow on David's channel. And yeah. oh yeah, I was thinking because there are a couple things I want to talk about. I think I think just because so many people requested it, I think we'll go through uh, the uh, Dillahunty rage quitting and actually watch what led up to it and declare our views on who was right and who was wrong there. See, after this whole conversation with Muhammad Hijab repeatedly talking about dildos and vibrators, as soon as you said Dillahunty, I thought you were going to say something about dildos. <laughs> we're going to talk about... <laughs> I almost said it. I almost modified his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um... And then we'll probably going to be live again throughout the week if David can. Well, I think we should continue this this stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Oh, people put it. People people, <laughs> people are putting it in the chat. They figured it out. <laughs> nope, nope. They, they figured out multiple variations of it. Okay. <laughs> Have a fantastic day, everybody. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, as they always say, as one very wise man always likes to say, stay away from Islam. <laughs>